Hey guys, before I kick this episode off, I wanted to throw in just a like a quick disclaimer here um, as we roll into this one. Uh, this is a great episode, and it's an important topic that I think any hunter in any state in the United States or you know North America in general should listen to because it's centered around us as kind of pitted against the anti-hunting movement um, and what our friends in Washington are going through with the cancellation of their spring bear season. And so it's very much oriented on that topic, but it is applicable to every hunter out there. But the disclaimer is not for that. The disclaimer is... I had some audio issues that we ran into with this software that uh, I record with and a couple of other things. So I wanted to address those. The two things that I really learned (laughs) out of this episode is the software that I'm currently using to record remotely uh, when I have multiple guests on, uh, you know, meaning not just one person, is not very good apparently. Uh, it was highly rated and all this kind of stuff, but uh, you know I've got I've got this great internet now ha- out here on the on the homestead. Which by the way, anybody living out in the sticks, <laughs> get you some Starlink. It's it's fantastic internet. So that's up and running. Uh, regardless, and and uh, d- despite that, we had some major audio crashing going on during this recording, where all of a sudden we we would just drop out, or it would kick them out, or it would kick me out. It took me hours to kind of mesh this uh, audio together. That's why this episode is late this week, uh, but it's important to get it out there. And so I think I salvaged it pretty well. Um, and going forward, I'm going to switch to a different software and see if that's any better, uh, because it's just unacceptable. I pay for that software and it does what it did and the audio just is not that great. Um, so for that, I really apologize. And that's the first thing I, I learned. Um, you'll notice sometimes we talk over each other. Sometimes there is like this weird transition to a different topic. Um, and that's because of the audio or I'm sorry, the software just kind of cutting out on us. So, um, Regardless, the, the message in there is still important, and it's still very, uh, I, I think, listenable. And so the second part I learned is when you're recording a podcast on a Friday night and whiskey is flowing, and you're talking about a a, a topic that I'm uh, this passionate about, which is fighting against the anti-hunting movement, uh, apparently it, with a little inebriation, uh, I, get, I get pretty saucy. So <laughs> that disclaimer's in there as well. Uh, with that said, guys... Again, the message is important. It's important that we all help our uh, our friends in Washington with this spring bear hunt and try to get it back for them. the The canceled bear hunt was it all came out of emotion and you know just propaganda and, and things that aren't applicable to the science and the wildlife management systems that are in place in the United States. And so we, we've got to kind of erase the state lines and come together and support our Washington hunters. It's also going on in California. We've got to help them out. Um, and that's what this message is all derived around. And so with that, let's get into it with my new friends over in Washington and help them get this spring bear hunt back on the schedule. There exists a threat from anti-hunting groups to politicians trying to give our land away, and we won't stand for it. Those vast western landscapes provide the space for our wildlife to thrive and a place for hunters and anglers to fuel the fire that sparks their soul. In this show, we share our love of hunting, fishing, and conservation. Here, we provide the foundation to meet these threats through passion and the grit of the American outdoorsman. Welcome to the Western Huntsman Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of the Western Huntsman Podcast. This is Jim Huntsman, the host, coming at you from the Broken Time studio right here in Clark Fork, Idaho. I almost forgot where I was. <laughs> I got a good one for you guys tonight. I am on the line with uh, some stellar Washington hunters that uh, we've been we've been trying to put uh, this together for a while. Uh, if you guys remember back, I, I believe it was last summer, I had Joel Swecker on. Um, and Joel is my pal that sent me a skunk from Black Creek, uh, taxidermy. Oh, did I say that right, Joel? I always confuse it. Black Creek or Black, Black River. River. Gosh, see, man, I'm glad I asked. Yeah. I'd have just rolled with it. So 
So Joel was on, <laughs> and we talked all that. Uh, we talked a lot of taxidermy stuff last summer, but we've been trying to put this episode together because we're, uh, if you guys have been paying attention, been dealing with a lot of anti-hunting um, shenanigans going on over in Washington, uh, specifically with the commission and the spring bear hunt. And uh, we're going to roundtable this issue tonight and see what kind of uh, problems in the world that we can solve. And along with Joel Swecker, I've got Bo, uh, Bo Olson, um, which, guys, we are just for you guys on the on the show here tonight. We're not recording the audio or I'm sorry, the, the video part. So so don't worry about that. But uh, I forgot to say that before I hit record. <laughs> Uh, we've got Skylar Masters, oh I can have and <laughs> apparently we just let anybody on the podcast because there's also Mike Hers in the group. <laughs> Mike, I, I got a story for you, dude. That uh, so that? that spot, which I, I'm not going to say on the on the podcast, but where you, where you went muley hunting down in Utah, uh, is is where I. Yeah. So I, I'm like 17. I had this ridiculously overweight uh, Chesapeake. And, and his name was Barney. And he, he's, I, I swear to God, he was like 110 pounds. And I'm, I'm out there in that area where, where you were hunting there. And uh, I was just kind of cruising around. I don't think it was hunting season or anything because I had Barney with me. <laughs> he's in the back of the truck. And I'm, I'm going down this dirt road. And all of a sudden, he jumps out of the back of my truck. This is back before I'd either tether him or put him in a kennel or something. Jumps out of the back of my truck. I'm only going like 15 miles an hour and starts running up this hill. And I look up, and there's this giant mule deer buck bounding off, and Barney's trying to catch up to him, like he's gonna do something. I had to, I had to chase him down up this mountain and like literally pick him up. I have a picture of me carrying him back to my truck. My buddy was with me and and, and took a picture of it. Uh, but that buck, man, that was one of the biggest bucks I've ever seen in my life, especially in that part of the country, Utah. Uh, I think it's like. You know, people underestimate Utah, man. How was how was that hunt? Give us give us like a, a quick synopsis. Uh, it was uh, <clears throat> we had everything you can think of weather wise. We went from sixty five to sunny, and then that's when that huge windstorm from Nevada came in from the south, and we had forty oh, yeah. mile an hour wind just just at camp. And then I woke up in the middle of the night and. The wind had stopped. I was like, okay, sweet. So I went out to go take a piss, and I got three inches of snow on the ground. And we started. Oh, it was, it, after that, it was it was just freaking amazing. That's awesome. Deer all over the place. We, yeah, we I, had, uh, I had my, Go ahead. No, go ahead, man. Uh, we we might have a slight down delay, down so sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Uh, I had my dad down there uh, this year with two of my brothers. And I had my dad on the biggest buck I had seen down in there. And uh, he just, he just couldn't get a shot. He was the last tag we had to fill. Oh, wow. He had had, had fun. He had fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not, not always about notching tags, right? And Mike, you were on the show. You were on the show. What was that? A little over a year ago? Yep. Just about almost exactly a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember it was like not long after Christmas that, that you came on last year, back when I was in the legitimate studio and not in my uh, old hunting trader here. <laughs> so, uh, so everybody, they kind of, I want to, I want to do some quick in- introductions here. Um, l- let's start with you, Bo. Why don't you give us a, a quick snapshot of your background, and and we'll just kind of move around. Okay, I've been. Uh... One of the guide outfitters down in the Blue Mountains. Um, it encompasses four units that we're a part of: uh, Mountain View, Lick Creek, East Winaha, and then Mountain View. And uh, or did I say Mountain View or Tuc- yeah, Tucannon? Yeah. So um, it's we have a smaller chunk of the Tucannon, but it's an awesome chunk. And then yeah. we have the biggest chunk of the Winaha as an outfitter. So I've been doing that for ten years. Um, had the special use permit with the Forest Service. I'm proud to have it. And uh, but uh, just watching this decline mm-hmm. in elk and deer, and uh, it's a predator problem that we need to. It's it's we're behind the eight ball on this one. So is that um, is that what you're mainly guiding for, Bo? Is is bear or what all do you guide for? Deer, elk, 
and uh, and spring bear. Oh, gotcha. Spring bear is a big a big part of our business, but elk is our niche. Um, you know, um, we take some big bulls year after year down there, and it's just any more uh, something needs to happen. And you know, getting out here on podcasts like yours and um, Dwayne Show and other avenues, it's it's sportsmen need to get together now and make this happen. Yeah, and get a commission yep. in that is going to advocate for us going forward. Yeah. yeah, your commission I think is is one of the biggest issues. We're going to get into that. Um and yeah. let's see. I'm just pulling up some statistics. Skylar, you want to you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Yeah, I'm just a local Washington outdoorsman. I'm part of the Titan Outdoors Little Titans group. Um, we provide a, a hunting camp for some for 15 to 17 kids every year. And just recently, we're, we're getting uh, swamped with all this Washington commissioner's BS, and we're trying to get, get together here with Joel and, and see if we can do something yeah. about it. No, I appreciate that. What, tell me about this youth camp you guys do. What, what is that about? Well, that, that's, a whole, that's a whole other podcast we could get into. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, we, we take, uh, we're a nonprofit organization called uh, Titan Outdoors, Little Titans, and every year we take uh, – we say 10, but we end up taking a lot more. We're taking 17 kids this year. Take them on a, um, a hunting camp for four days in Central Oregon. And it's all kids that have either never been hunting or have uh, never harvested okay. an animal. Hey, hang on and one sec. What, kind of what are you guys doing there ruffling around? You don't is that elk? Playing with their pepperoni. Is that elk? Is that elk meat? This, this bear, this bear. Oh, okay. Bear. I like it. Taco oh, Tuesday. Green bear. Right right there. Man. I, and so just so the audience knows what, what these guys, these guys are at Joel's place. And um, Joel, you're just like south of a Olympia somewhere, aren't you? I can never. Yep. 20 That's minutes right. south of Olympia. And so they're all over at Joel's place and they're, they're all kind of circling around a blue Yeti microphone. And uh, that's how we're rolling tonight. So. Uh, <laughs> Skyler, I apologize. Did, did I cut you off on, on that, that youth hunt explaining that? No, no, that's okay. You know, we, we can touch base on that. We can touch base on that. On okay. Show yeah. I'd, I'd like to, I like, but, I like um, talking, uh, youth programs and youth hunts and yeah. stuff. So that, that's always a good topic. Uh, Bo, no, I, I have a, a question for you, uh, specifically on, you know, what you, you're an outfitter. This is your, this is your business. This is how you, you know, uh, make a living. Uh, is that fair? Is that fair to say? Oh, yeah, what, correct. Yeah. What does yep, absolutely in terms of business and revenue and and going forward, looking looking into planning for 2022, what kind of chunk does losing a spring bear hunt uh, do to your business personally? Uh, it's huge. Is it? Would you I say mean, it's, it's like a 20 percent or 30 percent or, or what, how do you break that down? It's about thirty percent of okay. revenue that I'm losing. And I want I want season, folks to sure. to look at that because we have a lot of people in the audience that are small business owners, right? And they whether they whether they're plumbers or they're lawyers, it, it doesn't matter. When when you're looking at from a business aspect, having the state come in and kind of strong arm you out of thirty percent of your revenue out of a company, thirty percent is huge. 30% will put a lot of companies out of business. 5% can put companies out of business. And so when you're talking about a, a revenue loss, uh, we, you know, everybody's goal when they have a business is, is to grow that, that. That's a whole point of having a business. And I, I never beat around the bush with that. For some reason, it's like almost this socially unacceptable thing to talk about that. Uh, today in the day and age, as if we want to hide behind the fact that the sole point of going to work and owning a business and employing other people or being an employee is to make money. That's it. Like what I do in my day job, I, I don't do it. I don't do it because I'm, I'm just a nice guy, right? I, I do it to pay my bills and make money. And, and right. so a net, think about it this way. Yeah. If, if you're not a business owner listening to this and something that the state came in and said, you know, we're not going to do this aspect of whatever you do anymore and you make, you know, a hundred grand a year and 
that is going to affect you. And now your salary isn't, and I'm only using a hundred grand because it, I'm dumb and that's easy math. Your salary is now 70 grand. So that's a $30,000 decrease in income right. uh, for somebody making that. So it doesn't matter if you're an employee or an employer, uh, that 30% is a, is a huge deal. And so I just wanted to make that point. Um, Joel, do you have anything you want to add to your background? I know we've, uh, We've covered it pretty good last year, but there's probably people listening to this that haven't, uh, that don't know who you are. Yeah, so I'm I'm Joel Swecker. I own. I grew up in Washington State, been a hunter for most of my life, um, and then I'm also I'm, I'm a full time fireman, but I'm the owner operator of Black River Taxidermy. Um, and so this this stuff, I just I like being involved in this. I'm I'm pretty shocked that there's not more taxidermists involved in this type of thing because not only for the outfitters aspect of it. Aside from all the statistics and stuff that are against, you know, them stopping the spring bear, um, you know, I'm, I'm just shocked that there's not more people involved with something in the outdoor industry as far as getting involved in this. Um, one thing that, you know, and that's I, you had the guy on from California. I, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I forget his name. Uh, he made a statement in there, though, that's like hit the nail on the head. And he's like, would you rather tell your kids about how hunting used to be, or would you rather hear about it from them? So I've really gotten, yeah. I'm trying to be involved in this as much as I possibly can. And then, you know, promoting the, pr- promoting the, the organizations like Howl and stuff like that. And we'll talk about that later, what we're doing with them. So um, sure. anyway, so yeah. that's just kind of my thing. If I can bring these, these guys are the experts as far as a lot of the bear stuff, they're way more educated. And then, so if I can provide some type of place for come and do this, then man, that's, that's awesome to me. So Joel, I just just curious the the background there. You've got a couple of bears. There's a there's an elk. There's a bunch of white tails. Probably I don't know. Maybe they're black tails. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know what else that. It's just too fuzzy for me to see it just yet. But um, yeah. It's uh, are are those yours or are those clients? Like I don't know what kind of hell of are hunting. These are, these, are, <laughs> these, are, these are clients. Like how these serious are, do I need to be about coming over to East <laughs> Western yeah. Washington there? <laughs> hey, hey, we we need to pan we need to pan this camera because yeah. that's nothing what you're yeah, seeing. These are just a small one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, those no, are the little ones. That's that's one thing that's like I I as a taxidermist, you know, like some, like, like I say, I say these guys are the experts, but I see like I'll take on. I was telling them we we're talking about this earlier. I probably take in, I think this year I have about 90, almost to a hundred bears in this year. And then oh, I've wow. also been really, I've been talking with the biologists a lot this last year when they started doing the, 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 the biology checks in Washington. And so that's what, you know, you and, you know, you, Jim, and, you know, we've talked a little bit about, it. I'm like, man, they had this plan from a long ways out. Yeah. And uh, yeah. this was not, this was not a, oh, let's, let's start a bill to, to decrease. This was a coordinated attack that started well before spring bear of last year. And so mm-hmm. that's what um, being in talks with the biologists and then seeing the bears come in and then hearing about the statistics about lactating sows. That's what I was telling these guys, man, out of all the spring bears I bring in, it's, it's pretty rare for me to even have a sow in. Um, and so I think if there's anything that I offer, it's just what I'm seeing coming in and I get to kind of see what, you know, the, uh, the other side to the argument that they're proposing. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I, I, I want to make the, you know, with what, what you're kind of implying there, Joel, the, the point that it doesn't matter if, you know, if you're a Washington resident and, and you're a hunter, it doesn't matter if you've got a wall full of trophies or you haven't even notched a tag yet that it's, it's irrelevant in this, in this fight. And, and it's irrelevant to what we are trying to kind of, you know, achieve by doing these podcast yeah. episodes um, and I, I don't know if I'm even making sense, but, um, I feel like you were kind of defending, uh, you know, yourself, but you have a lot to offer Joel and, and, you know, you've, you've, you've got your, you, you've been up in this business for a while. And so, um, Mike, uh, give us, uh, give us your quick bio, man. You've been, you've been posting like a, like Britney Spears lately. <laughs> I've, uh, since we talked last year, I've gone down a serious rabbit hole and, you know, got gotten more and more involved and in, like <clears throat> really starting to figure out how to post stuff with Instagram and stuff. My kids are quite amazed that I've gotten as far as I had. I've been talking with Sky 
And we just kind of laugh back and forth because our kids are laughing at us because we're like going gangbusters <laughs> with this posting stuff. Um, just a lifetime uh, hunter, lived in Washington my whole life. Uh, day job, I'm an iron worker. And <clears throat> in my off time, I post a lot on Instagram trying to trying to fight this, this thing we call anti-hunting. Scree gear. Have you guys checked it out yet? Scree is extreme mountain gear. The high performance hunting attire, scientifically tested, backed by a great company. It's my go-to camo. And of all the discussion we have about all this uh, infighting amongst hunters about what kind of gear they choose, it's okay to have a favorite as long as we're not fighting about it. And my favorite and my proven gear is Scree. Scree is spelled S-K-R-E. It's kind of a play on the word from Scree Rock found at the bottom of a cliff face or something like that. And they changed the name. And Scree gear is a complete layering system for all terrain and conditions. Gear designed to adapt to the weather. It's rugged gear, and it's all backed by a lifetime warranty. One of, one of the things I really like about Scree is their VIP sizing and exchange program. Order the wrong size pants, they don't fit right, send them back. They'll send you another pair. It's all on Scree's dime. Guys, it's a great company. Check them out at ScreeGear.com and use the promo code The Western Huntsman for 15% off and free shipping. Hoffman Boots is another show favorite right here at The Western Huntsman. There's lots of good boots out there. Uh, there's a lot of bad boots out there too, but Hoffman is a proven, proven system that I've been using for a few years. Actually, I've been using them for close to a decade now. And I love the company. I love the story of the company. It's like a family of shoemakers. And it's just a great North Idaho story. It's a great American story. They make a great boot without breaking the bank. Check it out at hoffmanboots.com and use promo code HUNTSMAN10 for 10% off. Don't forget, Phelps Game Calls is my go-to call company. You guys know it. I've been using Phelps for a long time. They're the oldest sponsor on this show. I'd say the flagship line of calls that they have is definitely geared towards elk. And what a great job that they do. But don't forget that Phelps Game Calls also has a full line of like waterfowl calls, predator calls. There's things that you can check out on the Phelps website that might surprise you. To include something that is coming up quick for us hunters, which is spring turkey. And I don't know how many of you are into spring turkey hunting, but man, is it a ball. It's a riot. you got to check it out. I love the black bat from Phelps Game Calls. It works very well for me. It's a great little read. And try out the uh, blacktail in distress call uh, when you're hunting bears. I'd love to hear if somebody calls one in that way. I've tried it a few times with, with no luck yet, but the you know we got a whole new season coming up, and it's coming quick, and I'm going to try it again. So check out phelpsgamecalls.com. Use promo code HUNTSMAN10 for 10% off. If you check out the westernhuntsman.com, you are going to find anything from t-shirts to Tacticam gear and all of that stuff. A portion of those proceeds is going to go towards conservation and fighting against the anti-hunting movement. Plus, you'll be sporting a cool t-shirt that says a Western Huntsman. And now I'm not the greatest t-shirt designer in the world, but I do have a friend that is. And he helped me put together a couple of really cool t-shirts on there. They're up now at thewesternhuntsman.com. And you could check it out. And guys, it, it supports the show. It helps me pay for all this equipment to get these shows out there. And to top it off, we're going to help fight against the anti-hunting movement. And there's a lot of new information and, and big announcements coming up regarding that from the Western Huntsman. So check it out at thewesternhuntsman.com and get you a t-shirt or get you some Tacticam gear. I'd really appreciate it. Let's get back to the show. Here we go. You guys hear me? Yes. A little difficulties there, huh? Down, down in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, there's a little button that says hide cam. Go ahead and hit that because it's actually, for, for once, it's it looks like it's on your guys' end, uh, the internet. There we go. Okay. We're not recording video anyway, so let's let's roll with that because Perfect. something happened. Awesome. Yeah. Put my bush light on the table. <laughs> <laughs> So, Mike, you were where I lost you is you were talking about how you've kind of gone down this rabbit hole and now you're a social media genius and an expert. And um, your kids have been amazed by your progress with it. Yeah. In, you know, about a month ago, 
uh, started getting involved with Howell and talking with those guys. I started branching out <clears throat> to the guys in California, like uh, Mike Costello with the Hunting Ain't Easy podcast. Yeah. And just trying to do everything I can to make sure that the things that we we have now, I have for my kids and my grandkids, and I'm not going to sit on the sidelines anymore and 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 just watch it watch it, you know, drift away. And yeah. I'm not going to be that guy. Said I wish I would have I wish I would have jumped in and done done something. Man, I'm tired of these guys, and I'm seeing less of it now. Uh, as a, just in a year, you know, you post something about you know get involved with the fishing game. And people are like, quit buying your tags. I'm just going to stop buying tags. That's that's going to really – that's going to put them, you know, where they need to be. No, that's not. That's hurting everything we're trying to we're trying to accomplish. All that is is giving in to the anti-hunters and the people who want to take this away. You just throw it in the towel. It, I'm not doing it. I, I totally I'm, agree I'm with that. It. I totally agree with that. And that, that also incentivizes – these uh, fish and game agencies to find other revenue streams. And and I like, I don't know about you guys, but as a hunter, I like being the main, if not the total source of revenue for these departments. Uh, because I, that, that makes one voice that we have, just one voice is, is going to be more impactful than a non-hunter because they're not the ones generating that revenue. And so that that's, that's an important point. It, that's going to vary from different state. And I'm not totally sure how the breakdown is in the state of Washington and how they're funded, but um, let's get into some of the numbers real quick. So the, as we set this up, as we, we set this discussion up, uh, there's, I don't know, somewhere and, and correct me if I'm wrong, somewhere between like 30,000 and 35,000 or something black bears in the state of Washington. The, the last I read, yeah. sorry, sorry, Bo, um, the Washington bear population is right around 25 to 30,000 bears. And that's conservative. Yeah. That is, that's conservative. And that's, yeah. and that's the same as Oregon. Okay. They're getting their same data. Right. So in in 2020, black bear statistics were as followed. The uh, spring bear hunt, there were 294 hunters, and 145 of them uh, got a bear. 145 in comparison to 25 to 30,000 bears is nothing. The hunter success rate on that is pretty high, Um it, that's that's almost half, but basically, out of all hunts in in the state of Washington, uh, with with twenty five to thirty thousand bears, there was about or just under twenty one thousand hunters, and uh, two thousand ninety two almost three uh, almost twenty one hundred bears harvested, which is roughly ten percent success. Um, those numbers when you when you look at that, two thousand ninety two twenty one hundred bears isn't even 10% of 30,000, right? I mean, I'm no scientist, but those those numbers are beyond sustainable. And I believe um, I'd have to check because I, I actually don't know. And this is one of the things I wanted to get home a little earlier for to, to, to be able to verify these statistics. But in a lot of states, that is going to equate to less than what the population growth rate is on an annual basis. Makes sense? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I, I, again, I, I, I don't know what it, what it is in the state of Washington. Uh, bear reproduction rates are, are definitely lower than, like, a wolf, which is upwards of around 40%. Uh, but but to, I'll find that out as, as we kind of continue on this conversation. Do you guys want to give us kind of an overview of, uh, as to where we're at in the state of Washington, because I just want to lay those numbers out as a foundational, you know, as we're talking, it's not like, you know, each season and, and particularly in the spring, hunters are going out and wiping out the bear population in the state of Washington. That's not realistic. That's not what's happening. That's not what the evidence is. That's not what the data shows. Um, on the contrary, it's a very healthy bear population. There's excellent habitat in the state of Washington, and they could afford to triple or more these spring bear tags that are available in the state and and that population would still be thriving in my opinion and so as as we kind of roll from that uh give us kind of a the synopsis as to where we're at i know uh you know the the commission voted to to stop the 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 spring bear hunt uh and then things have kind of progressed from there as hunters have gotten involved and where are we at now whoever wants to take that you want to take that mic? 
Well, so the the petition that got this back in front of the commission was the petition from the Inland uh, Inland Northwest Wildlife Council, um, and they're the ones that got the ball rolling, got uh, Blood Origins to sign on, Meat Eater, and a bunch of other groups. Um, where am I going with this? So they got – oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Commission. Well, there, um, there were six, there were six petitions filed. Yeah, and this is the, only, the this is the one that that made it all the way through. Um, so we have a meeting um, on March 11th, which there's going to be um, increased public comment. When on this. when is the comment period um, for that? It's on March 11th. There is a there's a there's a commission meeting on the 17th through the 19th. And there is some open comment periods on the 18th and 19th. There's one at 8.45 and I can't remember the time for Saturday, but they encourage you to talk on whatever is not on the agenda for that day during that open public comment period. And you have to be pre-registered to to get signed up for it. Okay, so I I, I need to clarify because I'm again, I've said it many times, the, the hamster doesn't spin my wheel very fast. Um, right. So is there, a, is there a public comment open right now through March 11th? Is that what you're saying? Yes. And then there'll be, there'll be a, there like is a Zoom a, meeting on the 18th and 19th kind of thing where you have to pre-register. Is that, is that right? Okay. Yep. That's, yep. The, the, big, the big one's on the 11th. But right now, there's, right, yeah. right, right now, there's a commission meeting on the 17th and 19th about clean air. Huh. The, 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 yes, you heard the that Washington correct. Department yeah. of Fish and Wildlife is going to talk clean air? Commission is having a meeting on the 17th and 19th to discuss you know, that, clean air. That kind of stuff just pisses They're drawing me off. This out. That, like, what is they, a commission meeting, a, a wildlife commission yeah. meeting doing talking about clean air? I'm sorry, but... Like, like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, not against, to get you pissed off. <laughs> yeah, I'm not against clean yeah. air. I, I mean, I'm just not, but I, I'm a, a wildlife commission discussing the topic of clean air. I, why don't Correct. we get together, create our, create yes. our own yeah. commission, you guys and me, and we'll talk about proper yeah. pandemic response for yeah. COVID-19. Because we're experts in that, right? Like that makes sense. Absolutely. I, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe yeah. we can yes. start us our own and, group, and, and we could talk about the proper way to live a vegan lifestyle, and and that makes as much sense as a damn commission of, for wildlife talking about clean air. Sorry about that. It I, stuff makes me fly off the handle. Right. No, no. Sorry to get you riled up. It don't take much to get, get riled yeah. up. Yeah, and and you know what? It doesn't take me much to get me riled up either. But I'll tell you this. People are not like, like we have to put in for spring bear Mm -hmm. by the end of February every year, right? The results come out when? Two weeks later, right? You see the conundrum here with the way the meeting set up, the next spring bear meeting. It's almost as if they already got one on us, you know, like, oh, well, it's too late. Sorry, It's it's too late, right? Well, bullshit. Okay. It's not too late. Okay. We can do this, and we can still have a spring bear season, and we should. And I'm, I'm when you're ready for numbers, yeah, come I'm at come me, at man. Let's, let's talk numbers. numbers. I, I, I feel like numbers are com- a good way okay. to like lay a foundation for the discussion because you can't argue with them. Okay. No, absolutely. But right now, yeah. they don't even have the applications available to purchase for the spring bear hunt. They've removed those right. from, Where? from for purchase. Okay, we'll, we'll, yeah. I'll circle back and there. and. In my hand right now, I'm holding last year's 2021 game regs. The only place in there for a spring bear tag is two lines. Okay? This is all it is. Spring bear. Wow. That's all it is. Right. At the bottom left of a page. The bottom left of a page that you could easily miss it, right? It's, if they it, it's, it's almost that. as if yeah. they've been kind of vying for this slowly yeah. here and there. Yeah. Okay? But – um. As far as the numbers go, I'm going to break this down into three sections in Washington state. And then I'm going to compare it, basically transpose that you can't see us, but I'm just going to give you numbers. 
Our total number of spring bear tags in Washington State that they give out in the whole state spring, is 668 wait, 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 not, tags. Sorry, you, okay? that, that's spring bear, right? I'm going to break right? it down. Yep. Not fall. Okay, okay. Spring bear only, okay? These are tags that they give out, okay, for the special few that draw them, okay? You can start in Copalis and go to Kitsap, and that's 120 tags, Okay, I'm going to I'm going to leave the Blue Mountains out for a minute and you guys are going to understand why. Then I'm going to go up to northeast Washington where they give out a lot more. They give out 390. Okay, from 49 degrees north to Sherman, et cetera. That's 390 total. Now I'm going to tell you something that encompasses the Blue Mountains specifically. It's not nine units. It's probably six units, but I'm going to throw nine units in. That's 158 tags in nine units that they mm -hmm. give out for the Blue Mountains of Washington, okay? The southeast corner. Now, here we go. In Oregon alone, in the Wanaha, Oregon unit alone, they give out 263 spring bear tags, okay? Now, I don't know if you know this, but where my unit is, I'm literally... At times, I could be yeah. 100 yep, feet yep. from Oregon in the Wanaha, where my unit ends. Sure. Okay? I'm back and forth, right? You mean to tell me? Okay. I, I'm not including the youth hunts. They give out 50 extra Oregon, youth hunts yep. in Wanaha yep. alone. Okay? That's just one unit on the Oregon side. Okay? So that's mm -hmm. over 300 tags they give out. You mean to tell me in Oregon, they have a total of... From Starkey, I mean, it's thousands of tags. In one unit in Oregon, they give out 4,000 tags. You mean to tell me that they have that many more bears than we have and the same bears? The, the bears are just Oregon residents. They don't cross back and forth and go into Wanaha, Washington. There is such a huge disconnect here with, A, our biologist, maybe he can't speak the truth. I don't understand what's going on. But this commission has no business dictating what these sportsmen no, are vying for year in, year out. And it's it's disgusting, honestly. And, and you started off this conversation with you were just kind of being loose about mm -hmm. having an attorney, sure. you know, and just various walks of life, right? That's what we need right now. We need an attorney to represent sportsmen and go in and basically sue fish and wildlife because guess what? Let's say Joel had 10 years of spring bear tags. Are they going to reimburse him for those 10 years well, No way. with his hidden agenda, right? He might have a lot invested in those 10 years. He didn't draw the tag, but just he's putting in for tags. He spent time down there researching the unit, okay, vying for a Mountain View tag. Scouting. Are they going to reimburse him for all that mm -hmm. time lost, right, and all that money spent within Fish and Wildlife? You, you know, that no, uh, that, not, and okay? that's a great point. Uh, so, you know what really chaps my ass with that is – when you think about when when you're looking at the state of Washington and you have. Well, let me put it to you this way. What would the public outcry be if you made some kind of legislative move or, you know, commission decision or, or whatever that took a 30 percent chunk out of a marijuana store's ass? What what would what would the outrage be with that? Oh, what? huge. Or, 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 you know, well, no, I won't go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> um, Listen, you you I get mean, the point, we, right? We you get know. the point, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's, oh, Absolutely. well, don't worry about the hunters. Don't worry about the people that make their living hunting. Don't worry about the people that, that live this lifestyle. And this is a passion and, and, and the, the, the BS of even getting a spring bear tag in Washington is already ridiculous. So, Right. You know, for me, I can get two bear tags in the state of Idaho, basically over the counter. I, I you know, I, and right. okay. what's okay. what's the yeah. difference? Here, let me let me interject here on that two spring two two bear tags. Yeah, in Washington State, here's something that gets lost in all this. We can purchase two bear tags. Think about that for a minute. But but not settling. for spring bear. We can we can buy two bear tags right now. So let me have for years. 
and, and because uh, there's a bear problem. There is a okay. bear problem. That's and why. The the thing yes. is, is that that's a conservation story that we need to be celebrating. These bears in the state of Washington, yes, is yeah, it, it really is a success story. There are thirty thousand bears in the state of Washington. We that is a healthy population. If you if you travel, which I do, all I, I'm all over the state of Washington for my day job. It is great habitat in much of the state. It might not be great habitat right there in Ritzville, Washington, or somewhere like that, right? Yeah. But when yeah. when you go up into the the Northeast and and into the Cascades and and everywhere that I'm traveling all over the place, I always think that man, I'd love to hunt bears right there because it it really is is. Um, it very much speaks to what that that iconic Western landscape when when people you know picture it and imagine it in their mind. That's Washington. That's Was- Washington has it all. They have the high timber, coniferous forest to the high alpine, subalpine. They've got the the lowland prairie. Um, well, I don't know if they call it a prairie, but you guys have driven across Central Washington, right? And you can watch your dog of run course. away for three days. And and it's flat and it's open and it's it's great country. Which which by the way, I saw some pronghorns running around. Uh, I mentioned it on the show at one point. They released pronghorns in Central Washington, and I got to see probably within the first ten percent of that pronghorn population coming back. I got to see two of them, and that's awesome. And so there are things that that Washington has done right, uh, but I want to talk about. Your, and get your guys' take, and I, I know, Joel, you have a take on this, but why spring bear? Why are we coming after spring bear? It is, in terms of bear harvest, the most inconsequential season out of any species in the state of Washington. Why spring bear? It's well, low-hanging fruit. It's because there was only 13,000, approximately 13,000 apps in 2020. Um, people applied for those permits. And if there's 13,000 apps, you get four choices. So, so really, that 13,000 apps is about 3,300 people put in for it. So wow. they're going after the minority of hunters that are looking to hunt spring bear. Yeah. And I, and the other thing we got to remember is there's we have, do you do you sorry oh, go we, ahead we go have ahead. two bear tags. If you draw that spring bear, it it doesn't you don't get a third tag. Right. That is one of your two bear tags. Gotcha, gotcha. I, I think I think too, Jim. I think I think the spring bear, kind of like what Mike was alluding to, is it's low hanging fruit. I think spring bear is really easy to tug at the non hunting aspect of this, of especially in Wash. I mean, Washington, a lot of the voting system is derived from the major met, metro, metropolitan areas such as Seattle and Spokane. So I think that they, and this is where speaking with the biologists this last year. Uh, when I found out that this was all coming down the pipe, it's really, really easy to say, well, the spring bear hunters are killing the moms with the cubs. Mm. And that is a really easy thing to present to the general public and say, hey, we need to get rid of this because this is what's happening when that's that's so far from the truth. When, when they when they took away hounds and bait a long, long time ago, a while ago, I remember the, the, the uh, commercial that was coming out on the TV when they were promoting that. And it was someone shot a cub in the paw on a bait pile and that bear rolled around on the ground screaming like a little pig. And it was like, well, of course you're going to vote no for bait if, you don't, if you're not educated in this. So the same thing is happening with the spring bear and that's their ammunition. The problem is that it's backfiring. And so because- uh, say, say that one more time. Are not I, there I think that's Joel, hard. right? It's The problem is, is it's what? Yep. Yep. The problem is, is that they're they're using that as a as a tug at the heartstrings to the people yeah. that don't hunt. The problem is, is it's backfired on them, meaning that I think that they were I think that they were really believing that the statistics were going to be that more lactating sows were shot, and that is not the case. They could have asked any taxidermist in the state of Washington, and that could be. I mean, it's easy when you when you flesh out a bear, it's really easy to know. Well, I can tell whether a bear has been lactating within isn't the last there, two years. Isn't there data from last season that shows that only one bear yes, was, yes, was really. shot? There was one lactating so, sow. So one lactating yeah. sow. And and honestly, I'll bet you if, if they opened up bait, uh, or I'm sorry, baiting for bear hunting, that would be reduced to zero. Because it, it's, yes. I, I, I don't know. That, that may be a stretch me saying that, but... You're exactly right. 
this that's their whole thing. That's their whole thing, Jim. Is they're trying to use this as we're we're shooting the um, the the sows with cubs, and we're you know we're hurting the bear population. If they really cared about us shooting sows with cubs, they would let us bait and do exactly what you said and be able to positively almost ninety nine point nine percent that it's a boar or yeah. it's a sow with cubs. This is not part of their agenda. Their agenda is to pick and cut a thousand cuts until until we're done to get rid of hunting. They care not about those bears. They care about their agenda to end all hunting. And this yeah, is the first step. I, yeah, the first I, I, step. I Take totally away agree. Bear and I, I totally next. agree that the um the spring bear aspect of it and and you know talking about a lactating sow with cubs and you know, these, showing these cute bears on TV and in a commercial and all that kind of stuff is a very easy sell. And that's, you know, I'm I'm working on a book when that it, that is very specific to this topic that we're talking about when it when it comes to anti hunters, and and they're very good at selling that emotional side of it, right? The, the, especially like the Humane Society of the United States, uh, Public Enemy Number One. I'll, I'll say that in every episode from here on out. Um, but when, when you're talking about the, the issue that we fall into and the trap that we fall into is it's so much easier to sell emotion than it is to sell factual data. You know, and I, I see a lot of posts and people talking about, you know, oh, you know, they're 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 um, they're pushing emotion over science and emotion over science and emotion over science. And that, that's like pounded and pounded and pounded. The problem is, is that leaves too much to be desired. It, it, it doesn't fully describe the situation on the ground because it's it's not that I disagree with that. That's exactly what they're doing. But people aren't interested in the science, and that's the problem. That is the problem that hunters have is we have the science. We have the data. We have the evidence on our side. But they have the emotion, and they have the social construct, the side of the the, the masses of people and, and, and through my research for, for doing this book, another thing that is incorrect that a lot of hunters are saying, and, and I've said it, I'm guilty of this, is, uh, you know, there's there's 10 percent of the, of, of the United States are hunters. There's 10 percent that are anti hunters and the other 80 percent. No, it's more dismal than that. It is about four and a half percent of the United States of America that are active hunters. Right. And then it is about four to five percent of fanatical extremist anti-hunting folks. And I, I want to make that difference because most people are not anti-hunters. It is the fa- fanatical extremists that get on this train and they're very good at propagating the emotional side of it that data and science can't just come in and make an argument against. It doesn't work. You can't reconcile the two different sides. So we have to figure out a way to approach it from an emotional side so that people within the masses of that 90% of folks that aren't really hunters and they're not really anti-hunters need to be able to grasp on an emotional level because it's emotion that sells. And it's, it's not, I guess that's the point. Emotion sells data, science, statistics, all that kind of stuff. That only works on people like you guys and me, right? We, we're the ones that pay attention to it. If I'm somebody that doesn't hunt, I don't pay attention to that kind of stuff, and I, I, I don't care for it. But for, for us, that's what's important, and it's on our side. But we don't have that social, uh, emotional side to defend what we do as a lifestyle and that's what we're lacking. And so I, I don't even know what got me going down that, uh, that little trail of tears there, but we let, let's circle back to what, what you guys were talking about <laughs> with the spring bear hunt being low hanging fruit. And, and in my opinion, uh, and I'm just a nobody, but, but in my opinion, that, that is exactly what you guys were talking about where it's low hanging fruit it's very easy to sell on an emotional level, and you get these. Uh, I want to talk about your commissioners because that, that's what brought this up. And um, <laughs> well, let, let's the talk about the old ones. ones. Yeah, which yeah. ones? <laughs> bring, bring it. And, and I want to. I want to present it in a way let's go, Jim. that, <laughs> if if for by the sheer sake of curiosity, one of the commissioners happens to listen to this episode. Which, by the way, with the exception of the two new ones. I've invited all of them. Is there three new ones? Three new ones. 
There's three new ones. Okay, okay. We're going to get into that. There's three new ones. um, I I have invited all of them, with the exception of the new ones, onto my show to explain this, specifically Lorna Smith. And in Lorna Smith's defense, she is the only one that responded, but she told me no. And she said that people's minds are already made up, and there's no point in me coming on your show to to defend my side of it or whatever. It's a cop-out. And Lorna Smith, if you're listening, you should reconsider that. Because I'm here to talk about it. I want to understand your perspective. I want to know why you think that attacking a season that yields less than 150 bear harvests a year was all of a sudden this important thing to you guys. I I want to know this. I, I, I need to know. Because I'm a guy that comes at this from the science and the data and the statistical information that makes up the North American model of wildlife conservation. I know that if you leave these bears alone and so-called let nature try to work itself out, you're going to end up with predator pits all over the state and everything is going to suffer to include the bears. So it's a ridiculous concept. So you should come on and counter me, Lorna Smith. Try it. Come on my show and talk about it. We'll talk about predator pits. We'll talk about statistical data. We'll talk about your emotions about it. And we'll talk about how... You know, it, within today's society and our, our, our social structure and how people react, you know, we, we grow up with teddy bears in our bed. So I get it. I get it. You know, looking at a bear and they're, they're you know, I enjoy I love watching bears. I love getting them on my game cameras. I love sitting out there in front of my bait barrel and watching the cubs go up and down the tree and knock my barrel over and all the all the things that I love about bears that does not take away from the fact that they need to be managed in order for ecological and eco- or not economical, but ecological balance. Well, economical too, because we've got somebody named Bo on this podcast who's missing out on thirty percent of their their revenue each year. All right, guys, I need to, I need to calm it down because I'm going to take up the entire show here. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> what was I asking? Do you guys remember what I was trying to get at there? Commissioners, let's let's talk about the commissioners. Uh, commissioners before we get ready. into the new ones, can you guys talk to me about the uh, the existing commissioners and and what's kind of happened there? I know one resigned. Uh, walk us through that. Yeah, so Fred Kuntz uh, stepped in it when uh, he was talking about the uh, the stuff that was happening over in the Blues, and <clears throat> he caught a lot of heat, and he said it was too political for him, so he bowed out. Which is good because he was. Can he, can, I, he, can he, I stop you right there? Yeah. What what was he talking about in the blues? I I, I don't know anything about that part. There, him and Lorna Smith were basically saying the same thing that it's a social issue, and the uh, the the fact that there is a lot of predation on the elk herd in the blues. Um, we're not going to do anything about the cats. We need to start cutting the tags to the hunters, and I don't even hunt the east side. I know, I know Bo is way more into that, um, that part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So Fred Koontz, he resigned, um, in, in a, in a weird way, you almost have to commend him for resigning because he was over his head and he was in a position he should have never been put in at all. He has no business. Now, Barbara Baker, Lorna Smith, they have no business being on a wildlife commission at all none zero can you guys can you guys expand on what you mean by because i i agree i agree because i i've done my own homework i've done my own research on the washington uh you know wildlife commission as as to you know i've pondered why are these people wildlife management commissioners in the state of washington right blows my mind but expand on that from your perspective because you guys are washingtonians well i I, i'm going to expand uh in a way that it, it, they, they just, I, I don't care what your degree says you have, you know, what Ivy League school you went to. To be on a wildlife commission means two things. One, you represent sportsmen, right? It's a, it's a public entity. You have to uh, look at all sides of the coin. Um, but our commissioners are appointed, okay? by our leader, okay, uh, of our state. And he has no business having anything to do with fish and wildlife or sportsmen. It's, it's a debacle sure. at best, okay? So you're appointing these people with great educations, um, 
you know, a zoologist, you know, a bird keeper. I mean, come on, really, what are we doing I, here? It, what was so interesting is when I when I read through all the biographies of all the commissioners, like a couple of them mentioned, oh yeah, I like to hunt or whatever. No, no, uh, yeah, no. no. Jim, you don't like to hunt. Jim, let me tell you this. Shooting let, a pheasant listen. 20 years ago does not make you a hunter. Yeah, listen, Larry Carpenter, okay, he conveys to everyone that he's a hunter, has hunted, whatever. To me, mm-hmm. if you're a hunter, it's a no-brainer. You're voting yes on spring bear season, okay? So yeah. he's not a hunter to me. So – Maybe these people are playing into whatever side they're on. He's he isn't Larry from Mount Vernon. Yeah, and Larry's no longer on the okay. commission. Okay, right. Yeah, so he's we've replaced. we've we've he replaced that seat. Left. Yes. So Baker and Smith need to go, and that's everyone knows that. Okay, they have no business dictating my livelihood and other sportsmen that have waited for these coveted tags for years and years. Right. You know, on average, uh, most yep. of the Blue Mountains is four to five years to draw a special tag, right? Took okay. me, took me eight yep. years. Yep. It took you eight years, right? If you're lucky, four to five years, right? That's that's kind of the average of what I hey, see. Ju- okay, just curiously so, on 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 that point is is that tag is that a point system or is that just random draw? It's a point system. Yeah. Okay. And you All accumulate right. anyway, points. You buy ghost points. I I buy ghost points every year for all my special tags as much as I don't want to, because I'd be taken away from one of my clients and I don't want to do that. But they're, I, they're yeah. not even letting you yeah. buy ghost points this no, year. No, they're not. not right. Not exactly. Yeah. So, but, but think about it. You hire an outfitter and he takes you out and he has the same elk tag. I'm just using this example. And I take Joel out and he's waited 20 years for this tag. And then I have the same tag. I'm never, ever going to put anybody in that position where there's a 420 on one ridge and a 320 on the other, okay? I'm not doing it. So I yeah. refused from day one, and I'm proud of that. I've ghosted, and trust me, it's hard year after year to not have a tag in the unit I'm an outfitter in, right? It's yeah. very, very yeah, tough. Yeah, for sure. Okay. okay, Okay. so now they're also dictating, you know, how many tags are allotted each year, right? Okay. And that's frustrating because the elk tags are getting less and less. Okay. If we don't manage these predators properly, there's going to be no elk hunting. Okay. And then, and then my livelihood is pretty much non-existent, right? It's like feast or famine right now. Okay. And that's pretty much how I explain to people it's yeah. feast or famine. So we it got is. two other outfitters in the blue mountains, right? And you have so many tags allotted and, you know, we all communicate with each other. Well, who do you got? Who do you got? Well, you know, you may you may have nothing. You may have nobody. You can spend all that time down there and have nothing. And it's frustrating that these people that have never, ever stepped foot in the wilderness or the Blue Mountains are dictating what our livelihood is. And that's to pursue big game. OK, it's a tradition that's gone on for hundreds of years. It's going to continue with sportsmen like us at this table and you and everyone else listening, but we got to do something. We, we've and it got starts to. getting rid of these commissioners that have no business being in that position. I, I want, you I want to, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Who is that? Well, this is Skyler. Skyler. Yeah. Just, I just wanted to read something that the RCW for the revised code of Washington God, states, you guys get me fired up. states that the commission duties, this is one of their number one duties. It says the commission shall maximize fishing, hunting, and outdoor recreational opportunities compatible with healthy and diverse fish and wildlife populations. Yep, yep. they're failing. They are totally. They're, they're failing. not following their own their own duties. Right. That that's a great point, Skyler. I'm glad you brought that up because that is exactly mm-hmm. the goal and the objective of most wildlife agencies out there. And and when you start taking away these hunts because you've been pressured by the Humane Society of the United States. Or Kitty Block personally right. gave you a phone call. That is not doing your job. You're you're going again. Like if you were in the private sector, uh, employed by by an employer, you would be fired because you did the exact opposite of what you're doing. What what you're supposed to be doing. Um, the the other thing that I think is super important that I want to I want to bring up in terms of the commissioners, right? 
And I only bring this up because I want there to be a comparison as to how it could be. Okay. Um, the, the Washington, uh, department of fish and wildlife. Am I saying that right? Do I, they're, they're the department of fish and wildlife, right? So I'm in Idaho for, for anybody that's isn't familiar with this. I'm in Idaho. I, I, during the last three years, while we're going into our third year, the, the, for this podcast, I've reached out to two folks in the Idaho fishing game. One of them was a commissioner and the other was the director of the Idaho Fish and Game. This is somebody who is appointed and has lunch on a weekly basis with the governor of Idaho. They both said yes and have both been on my show. If I reached out to if I reached out to the rest of the commission, I am confident that they would come on my show. They would they would talk about the issues. They would cut co- they would come on and and I, I want to say, you know, for my Idaho listeners that that listen to this, I know that the Idaho Fish and Game may not be perfect in your mind. And you may have an issue with one decision they made or or three decisions they made or whatever. There's there's disagreements. We're never gonna have a situation where the entirety of all hunters in the state of Idaho are going to agree 100% of the time with all the decisions of the commissioner in the fishing game, right? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen here. It's not going to happen in Washington. However, our commission is made up of folks who are truly passionate about being outdoorsmen. The Idaho fish and game director, Mr. Ed Shriver, director Shriver came to my house sat in my studio and talked about wildlife management and listened to me rail on some of the complaints I had with him and responded and, and defended the decisions that were made. And by the way, he doesn't, he doesn't make the decisions. He just, you know, he's there to serve at the pleasure of the commission. The point being, and the point I'm trying to highlight is when you compare that to, I have reached out to every single one of the commissioners in the state of Washington, and they have all told me, no, that's, well, well, one thing that jumped out, what you're saying, yeah. Jim, is you're referring to Idaho as, as fish and game. Washington is fish and yes. wildlife. Yes, that's a great point. There's, Let's there's, talk about there's that. There's a difference there. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And, and after all this that's been going on this, these past few weeks with Spring Bear, I got to hand it to the, to the WDFW staff. I mean, I think they've gotten a pretty bad rap over the years, and everybody wants to blame WDFW. But I don't think it's their staff. It's coming. They're being directed. Well, that, the that's the thing. And a lot of people have to understand that. And an, an employee or whether it's the director on down to a, a to a biologist, to the janitor, they all report and act out at the pleasure or I'm sorry, the pleasure of the commission. The, the commission makes the decisions. The, the employees enforce it. That So so I, I and I Correct. say that because a lot of people will be like, oh, like here in Idaho, they'll be like, oh, well, you know, Director Ed Shriver, you know, he did this and he did that. No, he didn't. He didn't. The commission did that. Director Shriver is just yeah, enforcing right. what they, th- the decisions they, they made. And he that's exactly the words that came out of his mouth when he was on my podcast was, I serve at the pleasure of the commission. That is what he does. The other thing in the state of Idaho I had one of our U- United States senators on the show. He, I, I sent one email and I got an email back saying, yes, say a time and place because they were talking about the salmon issue here in Idaho. And he came on my show. He's been a senator for years. Do you think I can get anybody from the state of Washington? Like, what's the deal over there? You guys can't come on and talk to the folks that you represent? I'm speaking to, the yeah, transparency. the transparency. And I'm, I'm speaking to the commission and, you know, some of the politicians over there, I've invited a couple of politicians on too, uh, from well, all over the country. But anyway, uh, that, that's a very important distinction. And that is one of the issues with the, um, with the commission there. I'm sorry. When I get an email back saying it wouldn't make sense for me to come on your show because it sounds like everybody's minds are already made up and no, I'm sorry. That is a total cop out Lorna Smith and you need to rethink it. Come on my show. Hey, Jim, this is Mike. Have you reached? I know you said you reached out to all of them. Did you reach out to um, Kim? Kim no, Thornburn? Thornburn. Have you reached out to her? I sent specifically? all of them uh, an email invite. 
does does that mean they yeah. necessarily yeah. saw it? Sometimes sometimes yeah. it'll go to spam or whatever, or they don't check them, or you know, I I don't right. know. But all I know is I reached out to everybody in the state of Washington, and I haven't heard anything back except for with Lorna Smith telling me no. Yeah, Kim Kim Thornburn was a no, but then she read the science. And then she turned to a yes vote. Okay. Well, I'll, if so, you guys, yeah, she's, she's I'll, I'll reach out. I'll, I'll reach out again and I'll, I'll get her. I'll get her on the horn. We'll, we'll, we'll record. We'll, we'll talk about it. And real, real quick too, before Skyler brings something up is I, I want to say this about Idaho fishing game. I hunted there, you know, mm-hmm. four or five times. This one time we were sitting in camp, elk camp. We're just sitting there all kind of, you know, having a frosty or whatever. Damn non resident two fishing game. Two fish, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two fishing game guys pull in and they go, You guys got elk tags? And we're like, Yeah, there's two bowls right up around the corner. Okay. <laughs> no kidding. Now yeah. think about that for a minute. That was I, I'd never seen that in my entire life. Okay. And I, I know I'm an outfitter now, but I had never seen that with Washington Fish and Wildlife ever in my entire life. Yeah. Awesome. In Idaho, they were advocating to go harvest the revenue that we sportsmen bring in to each state is mind blowing. Okay. And for them to do that, I've, I've always put Idaho on the top of my scale after that. I was like, that was fascinating to me. So anyway, sorry. Look, I know I, I, a lot of, a lot of the, the residents here in Idaho, we, we like to rail on, on Idaho and the state of Idaho, how things are managed or whatever sometimes, because there's, there's one little thing that we, we might complain about, but you know, I've I've hunted many states across the West. I've I've been residents in many states, to include Washington. I lived in Spokane for a, a, a deer season, and I got a I got a hell of a mule deer one year over in Washington uh, when I was a resident. And and the uh, fact it was the biggest mule deer I've ever shot. I don't I don't know if you guys know that or not, but uh, anyway, the the point is is. With all my experience and and what I what I've noticed with out of state commissions and and fish and wildlife and fish and game agencies whatever um idaho does a hell of a job and and some people might cringe when i say that in the state of idaho but idaho does a hell of a job like i don't think people understand the pro hunting status that is idaho and um they do it it just is that's that is the only way we manage our wild game is through hunting that's how it's it's managed, yes. and and honestly, that's how it should be in every state, because that is what is in proven. Fact, Jim, right. Go ahead. Yep. Right now, right now, everyone sitting at this table wants your uh, physical address so we can become a resident. <laughs> 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 so, um, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they, they saw, it's funny. I was putting in for one of the fly-in uh, units and. Uh, it's sold out and whatever, you know. Oh, down in the Frank? Hours. And so I, I have April 4th, and I'll be sitting on the doorstep of a fish and wildlife office, trust <laughs> you me. You should be. You so, better be. Yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I will be. But, but, but that just goes to show that the residents of Washington are now taking their business elsewhere. And, yep. and it should be that way. You know, you touched on something earlier. Washington State. <laughs> Is a phenomenal state. To it live really in. is. Yeah. We are. We we're all proud. We all live here. We're proud to live here. I, I think it's a beautiful state. Okay. We have everything, and we're just we're we're letting it go by the wayside by having these ill-advised people dictating what our livelihoods yeah. are. It, it really is. You, I mean, that's that is a point that one of the things that I wanted to bring up on this episode. Um, and, and I know I kind of did, but but it really is. Washington is a great, diverse landscape for and, and habitat for multiple species. And if it was managed through hunting, like like you guys need a wolf hunt. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to tell you, but like Washington oh. needs a wolf hunt. Oh. And, and, and so oh. it, if it's Listen. if it's managed <laughs> right, you open, yeah. open a can of worms. Oh, I mean, I'm telling yeah. you, you need a wolf hunt. Listen, Listen, I'm telling you, it uh, it's it's yeah. That's for that's for a different uh, non-public talking episode yeah. here. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I hear you. Yeah, it's. It's getting, it's getting, it's getting right now 
in, in fact, ironically enough, um, you guys probably know Jesse Marlowe. Um, last year he was a client of mine for spring bear. Um, he got a pretty nice bear and we were done and I just wanted to go show him the bottom of the unit overlooking Oregon. we So we went for a little drive. Okay. And we got down to the bottom of the road and I'm pretty cognizant I'm, of the unit. I mean, I spent a great deal of time in there and I saw these little tags, almost like stickers on this tree off the road. And it was off the road a little ways, I don't know, probably 50 yards. And I'm like, and, and it wasn't a timber company tag, yeah. right? So I got out, I looked at it, and I'm like, live traps. What, what is this shit, right? And it was Fish and Wildlife, right? WDFW at the bottom. If you are caught in this trap, call this number, <laughs> basically, right? It's someone, right? Basically. And I and, and whoa, it, whoa, whoa, whoa. it instantly wait, agitated wait, wait, wait. me. If you're caught right? in the trap, so like, yeah. like if you step in and you're stuck there and you're like, oh shit, I'm stuck in a trap. You got to call the fish and game to come get you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> call this 1-800 number. I basically 1-800 each shit. Was We're there, not there even answer. any cell Perfect. service yeah. there? I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's funny you say that it's pretty sporadic through there. Now that you think about it. Yeah. So, so it, it basically was, we're doing live traps. Yeah right here in this area, you know, and here's the number, whatever. And it just, like I said, it agitated me instantly, right? I have this spring bear client, you know, looking to show them a good time. And then I see this and I'm like, what is this? Yeah. What are they trapping? Right? So I went over there in haste and I looked at the sign and I'm like, I'm taking this sign down. And then I thought, well, that'd be silly. Why would I take that sign down? Because what if someone's dog or someone's ankle or whatever, they're, looking for a shed or something. So I left it and I took a picture of it and I got back in and Jesse and I talked about it a little bit and I'm like, Oh, that's garbage. I come around the corner and here is one of the biologists parked right there. Okay. And he's sitting in his vehicle and is Gabriel Spence. He's from white salmon. Okay. He's getting a free plug here today. Okay. So I pull up next to him. Yep. I pull up next to him and we're kind of BSing a little bit and uh, he doesn't know who I am. I, you know, and I just, he, he told me who he was and I'm like, Oh good. And, and I told him we were up here for spring bear and uh, he just got a nice bear and um, just going to show him the rest of the unit, you know? And, uh, and then I said, I'm just curious why you're here and what your agenda is, what you're doing. And he told me that he traps the wolves. Okay. Collars them. And then releases them. And I'm like, oh, well, he's now talking to the outfitter who relies yep. on elk season, right, for a living. So you can imagine how that conversation kind of turned. It wasn't really cordial at that point. Sure. And I just went, you know, and then he's like, you're the outfitter up here, aren't you? And I'm like, yes, I am. And uh, and so we conversated for probably an hour. And then after that hour, we were pretty kind of calm. And he said, I could probably get you to come with me to do this. And I go, yeah, I go, that would go over real well with my client base, right? I go with this guy, capture him and turn him and release him, right? Okay. Almost a year to the day, I'm down there with another spring bear guy this last year. So I guess Jesse's was two years ago. And I come around this corner, kind of where he had been sitting, the, the biologist, and uh, here's a pack right wow. in the road, right there. Okay, I don't know how many there were. There was uh, four pups and mom, and then mom had taken off. And I'm like, you know, I'm. Well, in, in Washington, what do you, do? you can't. You, you I mean, these things anything. are killers at best. You you can't you can't do nothing, right? So so anyway, so this is this is my spring bear guy this year, and he's like. Well, I've never seen one of those. You know, I've seen videos of them. You know, why are they here? That's what he asked me. Why are they here? Well, this guy just paid a good chunk of money to go on a spring bear hunt. And we come around the corner and you have these predators down there. Okay. And uh, what do I tell them? Oh, yeah, they're just they're trapping them right here. And then they're releasing them. And, you know, they breed like rabbits. And I'm telling you right now, it's a major problem also 
that is not being addressed by anybody. And here's the thing, Jim. Because there, like, you, like there's no talk of getting a wolf season or a here, trapping season. Here right? is the thing. Yes. Do they want my input when I have more user days than probably fish and wildlife combined? Whoever, whoever their guy is that spends the most days in the field. I promise you, he doesn't come close to what I spend. Okay. They've been invited by us for years and years. Come with us. We'll show you what's going on. What's on a trail camera? How many cougars and bears we have? And now we have these things. Elk and deer have no chance at all. None. No. It's impossible. So, and you want to it, take it's away, a mess. You want to take away a predator season because of what? What is your point? It's not based off of science. It's based off your bleeding heart. Guess what? It, it's time we just get rid of commissioners that have no business being in there. Okay. No, no, totally. It yeah. totally is. Yeah, well, that, that, there, there, there should be, there should be like a litmus test, you, you know, for for anybody coming on onto a, uh, any kind of fishing game board, uh, uh, with with commissioners. That that it shouldn't even be a question. Like it's almost like Inslee just sits there and he's like, oh, this guy, I know this guy. I'm gonna put him on that. Yeah. Or this yeah. lady, I'm That's gonna put her is. on the on the, you know, wildlife commission. Yeah. And you know, even though. She has spent or he has spent a, an entire career on one aspect of wildlife that is irrelevant to actual wildlife management in the state of in the state of Washington. And a great example is exactly what you just said is how much money is a state of Washington spending to cull the wolves that are creating problems oh. for farmers, ranchers and in the wild game versus releasing a few freaking hunting and trapping tags that does the problem because I guarantee you they're coming from Idaho. Idaho is set up and, and determined to manage for 150 to 300 wolves. We have 1,540 plus wolves in the state of Idaho that yeah. run a very tight schedule on their territory. So those wolves get fed up and they leave. And where do they go? Oregon and Washington. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Put and that you know in the pipe said- and smoke it. He he asked me if uh, like how many I'd seen on my cameras, how many I have on cameras, etc. He basically wanted my research for his research. You see what yeah. I'm saying? They want oh, my yeah. input totally. and my data for their research. How about you get out and get boots on the ground and study your one flyover a year and dictate how many bulls are in what canyon, and etc. And put some real data behind your data and your pamphlet, right? Yeah. It's it's yeah. frustrating. The totally. boots on the ground are key. Boots my, on the ground. My cousin and I spent a couple of weeks in the blues this yep. last year and we saw more bear than we saw deer. And yep. it, it's out of control. Yeah. How were you seeing them? Like like were you guys seeing them on the ridge over or were you bumping them or were they up in a tree? Like I and there's a reason why I'm asking this. You you just see them walking ridges there you can glass them up for you can see miles away, but you can see them walking ridges. Walk, Bears, yeah. Oh yeah. Ridges every yeah. morning, yeah. walking the valleys. You could, you could be people often ask me, where are all the cow elk? Well, all the cow elk that time of year are usually down off the mountaintop, down lower grounds where they're safe, right? Okay. They're calving. I, I, yeah. touched, I touched on this on a different show, but you are seeing cow elk now separating themselves from the giant herd because they're getting surrounded by the whole herd's getting surrounded, right? The weak, the yeah. weak are just, they're picked out and they're killed instantly. Okay. I, I told Joel earlier, you know, I, I could show videos. I wish I had them to show the commission and show what these spring bears do to the elk calves and the fawns. Oh man. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. It's, it's it, crazy. There's nothing nice about it. Nothing nice about it. Okay. But some yeah. of these cows are then, Moving way in obscure spots, way high up on a ridge top. And you're like, is that a cow? Well, she's <laughs> having her baby up there because she yeah. feels safe up there, right? And then you Which watch the just spring placed. bears. And they, yeah, pretty soon, the spring bears, they smell them out, and it's it's a done deal. It so, is a done deal. So. And, and that's that's the part that anti-hunters don't ever show. They don't ever show the right. black bears coming out of the bushes and, and, no. and ripping apart a calf. And and no, and the same don't. with wolves. They don't show the footage of the wolves eating a cow oh. elk, a full-grown bull elk, 
or a, a moose getting eaten alive by these packs of wolves. And yes. so for some reason, yes. they have this protective spirit when it comes to the predator. And the predator management yeah. through hunting is somehow some moral evil. And w- yeah. when the reality is the North American model of wildlife conservation protects these animals through hunting, it doesn't happen. Uh, I'll tell you something. I, I, I've been doing a ton of research on this because I, I, I which I don't know. I don't know what I'm thinking. I, a dumbass like me is trying to write a book. And and no, I'm good. I'm getting through it. Now, I don't I don't know. I can barely even spell my name, and uh, I'm <laughs> trying to do this right. We're gonna buy it. <laughs> what's insane to me is the incredulous lack of information available to show that any group anti-hunting has done anything for conservation efforts anywhere yes. in the North American continent. Like, I am not kidding you. Like, like PETA hasn't done jack shit. The Humane Society of the United States, you know what their big accomplishment is? They got some big retailer to stop selling fur. I'm sorry, that doesn't come from wildlife. That comes from mink farms that are right there in town. So wildlife, you're saving wildlife? No, you're not. You're not. That, that's your big accomplishment. That's your big achievement. And these, these folks that are trying to relist wolves in Idaho, Wyoming, and Montana uh, because there, there's an emergency relisting necessity because all these wolves, 21 wolves were killed coming out of Yellowstone. I'm sorry. The state of Idaho alone exceeds the wolf number population minimum for the ESA for the entire three-state region to include national, or I'm sorry, Yellowstone National Park. So the facts are not with you guys, and, and the emotions have got to stop. You cannot manage wildlife based on the fact that you think a teddy bear is cute, so you think a black bear and a grizzly bear are just <laughs> as cute. Grow up. So, so we, we know there's a huge problem now with, with the anti-hunters. Uh-huh. So what do the hunters do about it now? Yes, I mean, great transition. For platforms like yours or your, your podcast – I wouldn't know anything about Blood Origins or, you know, the Sportsman's Alliance. You know, I've learned that by listening, you know, to podcasts like yours. And but not all hunters are listening to podcasts and not all of them are on social media. And for the most part, the hunters don't want to get political. You know, yeah, um, they, they, just, they want to buy their tags. and They want to go hunt. But more and more people now are getting involved and we need to get that word out that there is organizations out there that are fighting for us. There is ways to get involved. Yeah. Um, you know, like, like I said, the, the Sportsman's Alliance, HAL is amazing. Joel's just working on an amazing uh, 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 donation. Um, he, can, he can go into more detail on that. Which, which we Joel, have I... Get, we have to get people... In. He went to sleep. He was, he's here. Oh, he's still, are you still <laughs> awake, dude? He's working on heads. Like, uh, come on, oh, man. Yeah. He's, he's working on a buck mount. <laughs> Dude, it's Friday night, man. Quit working. Uh, I'll tell you what, Joel, with yeah. your uh, with, with what you're talking about, because I, I want to talk about what Joel is talking about with with uh, how for wildlife. I want to throw in, man. I I will add a complete Phelps Game Calls calling package uh, to your package for how for wildlife. Do you want to Do you want to oh, talk about that? That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so uh, and and by the way, Skyler, I will I will come back to the question you asked. Uh, sorry about that. Go ahead, Joel. Yeah. No, you're you're good. I just wanted to get yeah. Joel involved there. Yeah. So we're uh, they had to wake me up. Uh, so they're like sewing a lip back to the eyeball or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. From from someone that skinned an elk out with a John Deere riding lawnmower. So, <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> so. How for wildlife has kind of impressed me in the fact that, you know, the, the, any of the listeners listening to it, I mean, this organ, any, any of the organizations are really good. How is fairly new. Uh, they've only been on board for a couple of weeks, uh, four weeks, Mike's telling me. So, but one thing that's impressive about them is they literally take all the legwork out of it for you. I mean, they, you sign up for this and they send you a link and they even have templates in there that you can fire off to the commissioners of the state that you want to basically fight on. They had a huge win the other day. 
uh, Colorado. They 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 killed the bill secondary Boom. to the comments from yep. Hal. They killed the bill that was trying to take away cougar hunting in Colorado. So that was a huge one. So where I'm going with that is Hal has impressed me. Um, so I got a hold of Charles and he called me the other day and I said, listen, any of these organizations that you that you have that's doing this, they need they need funds. They need money and no one wants to ask for money. So I thought, you know, as my platform here, I thought, you know, let's do something like that in order to get them some amount of funds. So what we are doing is it just kicked off um, Thursday. So yesterday uh, we were doing a, a raffle of sorts for uh, a deer shoulder mount here at Black River Taxidermy. Uh, you basically purchase tickets. Each ticket is ten dollars. Um, you can either stop in the shop. Not all the listeners can probably do that. Or you can go on to PayPal and you can send me funds for that. And the, the, the site that you're, the email that you sent it to is black river taxidermy, uh, at gmail.com. Is that, it, and it's $10. A ticket. Oh, go no, ahead. no, no. That, that, that's, that's how they get the funds to you. Yeah. So they go into PayPal, they put in that, they put in that email address to send the funds to, they give me, you need, they need to give me their name. They need to give me their phone number to call in case they win. And then they need to tell me how many tickets they're going to purchase. And then they of course include the fund. So if, if you're buying four tickets, you're, you're sending me 40 bucks that gets put into a raffle. We're going to draw uh, the, the winning ticket on Super Bowl. Well, we're going to do it after Super Bowl. Um, <laughs> And I, you don't have to be, we're going to do a live feed on Facebook. You don't have to be present. I'll call whoever wins. My nine-year-old daughter, Emma, is going to do the drive. Nice. And uh, the, it's, for, it's for a shoulder mount here. Like I said, it's for a shoulder mount here at Black River Taxidermy for, for a deer shoulder mount. If you have, and even if you need a cape, I've got extra capes. If you don't have to be a Washington resident, you can be, you know, I'll make arrangements to have that animal shipped back to you if you're in Idaho or if you're in Montana or wherever. All the proceeds for this, 100% of the proceeds that come into this are going back to Howl. So if, you know, to get them funds in the fight for this, because they've been outstanding as far as getting a lot of this information. So that's what we're doing. Um, you can go to either the Facebook, my Facebook page or Instagram, and, and we have details on there if, if you didn't catch uh, what I put down. But yeah, so we're trying to do that and get Howl some funds. Uh, Joel, what, let's say, let's say uh, some fairly handsome yet chubby dude like me <laughs> were to shoot a giant you know black tail and wanted a shoulder yeah. mount what would that cost me coming in walking in off the street about 750 here in the shop okay so and and just uh just for clarification real quick guys uh for those of you listening if you've been living under a rock and you don't know what how for wildlife is go to wildlife or I'm sorry, howforwildlife.org. Uh, this is a website that allows you to jump on there, sign in, and it's a free account. Uh, and you're, you can go into all of the issues that we're facing as hunters as a unified voice and go in and click sign my name. And it sends you or, or sends a, sends an email to whether it's a legislator or a commissioner or whatever the case is. And they set it all up. So all you have to do is click a couple of buttons. I I sent four or five different emails in less than 30 seconds. And so it's very fast. It, it allowed me to call Governor Inslee. I left Governor Inslee a very lovely message. And uh, all these things <laughs> off of the website. So anyways, guys, listening, check out howforwildlife.org. Um, the thing that I wanted to tell Joe is, or Joel, uh, is I will add a complete Phelps game call calling package to that to include a bugle tube, uh, two reeds and a reed holder and an external reed. So that is again, a bugle tube two uh, mouth. And I don't care if you guys, uh, you know, I'm not biased with them. When, when you jump on Phelps game calls, I don't care if you pick the Maverick or the pink or whatever, you get to pick all of all of that. Uh, and, and then a and then a a reed holder and an external reed. Uh, it's about a hundred and fifty dollars to buy all that separately. Gosh, I'm doing the math off the top of my head. I hope I'm right there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, hey, what, hey, for the win. Hey, and I'll Jim, throw in a Western Hunt. I didn't know they made anything else other than what's that? Hey Jim, I didn't know they made anything. 
I didn't know they made anything other than the Maverick. I, I thank you for that information. No, they don't. If <laughs> if you are um, if if you are one of those uh, anti hunters in San, or, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Jason. Listen. Hey, hey. So serious on a serious note. So when people do go sign up for Howl, and I'm seeing this all over, you know, Facebook or Instagram, people think that once you sign up, that's it. You got to sign up. You have oh, to activate point. your account. And then, and then, and then you got to go into the action and do your actions. But it's just—it's not just a one-time thing. Go in every day and do yeah. those actions. And every time those actions are made, you gain points. And so, so what's what's fantastic about that is I, I don't know who was just talking. Was that Mike? Yeah. Okay. So what's fantastic about that? What Mike was talking about is like. When when we're talking about all these issues, how for wildlife or how for wildlife has already been responsible to because let's face it, we've all got day jobs, we've all got our our, our spouses and our kids and our you know mortgages and and uh, any of you that you know lower yourselves to drive a minivan have to make a payment on it. All those things come together, right? I'm kidding about you, minivan drivers. Relax. Um, <laughs> everybody, everybody's, everybody's got those things. So How for Wildlife makes it super easy, and that's what Mike was talking about. You have to go in and click on the issue and click send the email, and it's going to sign your name for you. You get points. There's all sorts of prizes involved to include what Joel was talking about with a shoulder mount, plus the Phelps game call pl- package, plus the... Uh, uh, the Western Huntsman swag T-shirt or whatever. I'll send you one, one of the T-shirts off our website. Um, all of that is super easy to do, and it stopped the. I, I believe it put an end to the New Hampshire Beagle Bill. Was that the one, or was it the other one in the Northeast? I can't remember that issue in the Northeast, but I, I all I know is I clicked on it and sent the email, and I clicked on it and sent yeah, for just... stuff in in Virginia. I don't even know about these issues, but I'm helping hunters. We all have to exactly. come together. That that's the, one of the big things about Hal is you can fight for other states as well as the state that you live in. And, and why is that hunters important? All around the United States. Yep, all the hunters around the United States can fight for for Oregon, can fight for yeah. for New Hampshire, Colorado, whatever, wherever the issue's at. And uh, yeah, you know, yeah, and and, 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 and it and doesn't matter. Support, support us. Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't matter if you're a houndsman. It doesn't matter if you're a trapper right. or a, or an elk hunter versus a predator hunter. Maybe you're just somebody that hunts coyotes. It doesn't matter. We're all on the same team. Uh, I and, and that's one thing I wanted to have you guys kind of expand on. Like, tell me about that. How do you guys feel about the the concept of hunters coming together? Because we know, we know what the facts are. We know what the data su- suggests. We know what the North American model of wildlife conservation has produced compared to our friends across the ocean in like Europe, for example. They don't have the North American model of wildlife conservation. I had somebody on my show last year from England who is not able to even use his bow in an actual hunt. He's a big time bow hunter enthusiast, but he's never actually been bow hunting. How bad does that suck for that guy, right, Kenneth? That sucks. Kenneth, I I got you covered, man. If you get a tag, come over to Idaho. I'll take you elk hunting. Just to, it's a long flight from hey, England, but I got you back, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so we don't want to end up like that. We we certainly don't want to end up like that. So let's talk about that. What what is the things that you guys see, and, and, and well, let me ask you this first, guys. Uh, any of you running short on time, or are we okay? Because I know we've been going for a while. No, you're good. No, we're good. No, we're you good. good on your end? Bo's about two feet deep, so. <laughs> Bo, what, say that again. Bo's what? I said Bo's about six beers yeah. deep, so he's going to get talking. Well, that's all right. He's got I you mean, guys. He's you. got you guys. You can, you can give him a ride home, right? Buy him an Uber. Yeah. Guess, don't they? Don't they have Jim? Them? Just don't bring up wolves again, and he'll be. Yeah, I, get, <laughs> I get so fired up talking about this stuff. No, man. wolves are good. You know, wolves are good. Never hunt them. Never trap them, Bo. Don't even. The the yeah. best thing is they're they're super cuddly, and you could pet them. We'll talk offline, okay? I'll tell you some things. <laughs> it's uh, it's 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 disgusting what's happening. 
And, uh, you know, just taking away one of our seasons, it's just a start for them. Right. And we can't let it happen. You know, you know what bothers me about the whole thing, Bo? When, when you're talking about wolves and bears and mountain lions and all these things, the, the guy that has been studying this for decades and comes at it from a very non-biased position, all he wanted was the facts. All he wanted was the facts. He doesn't care about emotions. He doesn't care about opinions. He doesn't care who thinks this is cute and that's ugly. He doesn't care about whether snakes get mushed in a gosh damn uh, cornfield versus a, a bear getting wiped out during bear season. Doesn't care. Yep. This guy came at it from a very pragmatic stance, and his name is Dr. Valerius Geist. And he explained, and people just refused to listen. He explained exactly what happens. This isn't a guess. This isn't emotion. He explained exactly what happens were you to allow predators to not be managed. Because I got, I got news for you commissioners in the state of Washington. Wildlife does not manage themselves despite what myths and legends and theories you've heard from other folks. Wildlife does not manage itself. We have, on the North American continent, been managing wildlife, specifically predators, for thousands of years. And you might say, oh, wow, wow, you know, yeah. we've only been around since 1776. What do you think we were the first ones here? We, we were not the first ones here. And, and before we were here, predators were a direct competitor to our livelihood. And so don't tell me that wildlife manages itself. It doesn't. That is what creates predator pits in an out-of-balance ecological landscape. It doesn't work. It has been proven on every single continent on the face of this planet, with the exception of Antarctica and the North Pole. I don't know. Is the North Pole a continent? What do you, what do you guys think? Because there's seven, right? Like <laughs> That doesn't work. Antarctica is yeah. a continent. And, and we don't have any wildlife management there because, God, I mean, like, what the fuck lives on, on Antarctica? A freaking seal? Penguins? Penguins maybe. Something? Yeah, maybe. The point is, is populated <laughs> continents on the face of the planet. The only system that works is managing wildlife through hunting in, a, in conjunction with a, an organized system like the North American model of wildlife conservation. It's unbeatable. It's unmatched, and it is what has worked on the entire planet. Try me. Come on and prove me wrong. I, I saw something. Yep. I, I saw something um, on Inst on the old Instagram, you know, about why hunting is conservation posted by the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. And just in the 1920s, there was about 13,000 pronghorn, and now there's 1.1 million today. You know, that would not happen without the North American – um, conservation model. or the bison. Yeah. the bison. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Skylar, yep. I want to ask you something. Yeah. Was that PETA or the Humane Society of the United States that made that happen? No, absolutely not. <laughs> that yeah. was sportsmen. That, that was sportsmen. Yeah. Because it's the same story with whitetails, turkey, yep. Rocky Mountain elk, Thule elk, Roosevelt elk, black tail deer, mule deer. It's the same story with all species on it, uh, within the North American continent, yeah, these species or... were at. It, it, the, I'm sorry, yep. the facts are not with the anti-hunting movement. The facts are not there. We fund it. We are the ones that are passionate about our wildlife. We are the ones that want to see healthy populations. We are the ones to see. We are the ones that want to see a diverse population on the landscape. We are the ones that understand that wolves can deteriorate the balance of an ecological system just like the Native Americans did 1,500 years ago. It's yeah. all documented. Yeah. You can't argue with it. So I think I saw guys, I, I apologize. I keep saying bringing, you know, I feel like I'm taking over the conversation. I want you guys to talk more. Yeah, on a yearly <laughs> basis, I think the uh, sportsmen's pay, pay in close to $900 million toward conservation yeah, almost a billion just, a year. just for Crazy. out of their tags, license fees. Yeah. You know, and not to count, you know, the Pittman robbers and stuff. So, and I and I think Jim, like to go well, back to yeah. what, to what you were asking too. You know, like how does it 
how does it all kind of tie in as far as like why hunters need to come together and stuff like that? And I think, I think part of it is the big thing. I mean, I remember when I was, and I can only speak for myself, but I'm sure these guys have some input as well. But I remember when I was pretty young and being thrown in a truck and, you know, going out blacktail hunting and stuff with, with uncles and grandparents like that. But no one ever talked about going out of state. I mean, it was like, no, that was something that, yeah. that you just, you just didn't do. You stayed to your state. Yeah. It was now, like for rich people. <laughs> yeah. And now, and now I have, and now I have clients in here that actually have guys that manage their out of state apps every year. Yep. And so the problem is, is that instead of having now sticking to a state, it's global. And I know that people have said it before, so it's kind of an echo, but at the same token, like, why does this matter to, you know, like how, why would someone from Oregon put an input for Washington state for bears? Well, and and it's not, and some people take it as like, you know, people down Oregon are going, Oh, great. Here they come or people in Idaho, but that's how it's going to be. There are people that really enjoy bear hunting. And if that gets taken away in one state, I'm sorry, but guess where they're going to go. They're going to try and find it someplace else. And so aside from all the yep. issues of having more bears, this is a this is not a state to state issue. This is a global issue with all hunters. And so therefore you have to you have to unite in order to because it's it does it, it focuses everybody. I have I had a guy that was in here a couple of weeks ago and he was talking about the bear stuff and he goes, uh, he goes, Yeah, I just I, I haven't really gotten involved because I don't really hunt bear. I don't really focus on bear. And I said, well, that doesn't matter because when they we quit doing bear hunting and they go out of t- they go crazy. I was like, what's your favorite animal hunt? He goes, oh man, I live for elk. And I'm like, well, what do you think is going to happen to the elk population? <laughs> and so, and a light bulb went yeah. off to him. Yeah. And I'm not pointing that out to, you know, poke fun. I didn't name any names or whatever like that. But that's that's kind of the consensus that people need to get out of is that oh, it's not really affecting me. Well, it's going to. And you think that if they start with bears in one state and they get it passed, you think they're going to oh. We did it. That's it. That's Washington. Heck no. They're going to yeah, like, like that's it. That's they're done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. No, they're going to, they're going to keep going and they're going to go on. They're going to move on to another species or they're going to move on to a new season. Then they're going to start attacking the fall bear. Yeah. So it, it's not, it's not going to stop. So you have to unite. It's, it's pretty simple, Jim. I think you've said it before on your show before. We're all non-residents in 49 other States. And what affects us here is yeah. going to affect us in all the other States. So just because it's not in your state, can now, I it's can I come. can I chime in real quick on that point? That that is not a Jim Huntsman original. I stole that from Randy Newberg. <laughs> oh uh, really? I just, wanna, I just wanna make sure yeah, yeah, yeah. That Randy Newberg said <laughs> I don't want to get you in I, trouble. I, and this was this was years ago when I heard it from him and he's like, Well, I'm a non resident in forty nine other states. No, that's totally true. I, and I am. And and that is a super important point. That, that both you and Bo just brought up. Like, if you're an avid elk hunter, you best be on board with some effective bear hunting. If you're an avid elk hunter, you best be on board with some wolf trapping. Like, I'm sorry. It's all tied together. And that is why we as hunters have such a difficult time uh, combating the emotional arguments that these anti hunters bring to the table because they don't understand they're, they're, they're marketing to the 90% of the masses that don't educate themselves on this stuff. And they don't understand the complexities that come out of hunting and wildlife management through hunting and the model of conservation that we use here in North America. Like that is what makes it so difficult. So I, I, I just, I couldn't agree more with you guys. Um, man, I wish we were in person right. doing this. So, so what do we do now? So that's that's. Yes, let's talk question. about that. Yeah. Yep, yep. Who who said that? It's, and so we we talked Skyler. Skyler. So we yeah. talked about Great how point. we we've talked about you know blood origins. Um, you know, obviously social media. Here's the thing, with with, with blood origins, like, um, I I don't know who knows this or who doesn't know this, but with blood origins, um. You can get on their website and do this little three dollar donation thing a month. Done it. Yep. Like who doesn't who doesn't have three bucks a month? Right. It's easy. The I I hate to be one of those and, and I do it too. Like like if you guys want a, a t shirt, get on the Western Huntsman and buy a t shirt because I'm donating that money towards conservation efforts through like Blood Origins or Sportsman's Alliance or whatever. Wherever or how for wildlife. I donated um 
I don't remember how much. It, it wasn't that much, but uh, to howl for wildlife the other day. And, and, and I, I think that, that people need to understand that as much as we don't want to sound like an infomercial, you know, where you're buying some big bug-eyed cell phone for your geriatric parents or something, that's not what we're doing. Right. But this stuff costs money. This stuff costs money. The Humane Society of the United States, they, they raise over $150 million a year simply to get some big retailer to stop selling fur. So we have to figure out a way to bring that to the table. And, and I, I, bring up, I bring up Blood Origins because, you, you know, as an organization, um, they have Robbie. And Robbie has an accent. And Robbie is extremely articulate. Like, he has a way of articulating the story of hunting that anybody, whether they're some overweight hedge fund guy that goes to Africa and, and, and hunts something versus some dude in the, that's, a, that's a janitor in a high school hunting in Idaho. Everybody can relate to what Robbie says. And, and, that, and I, I am not saying that to be offensive to anybody. So if you're a fat hedge fund manager, I, you know, I apologize. I, I apologize. Sorry about more, that. More emails. Yeah. <laughs> so we know these platforms God, They're going to start there. flowing. Go ahead. So, what so what was that? I'm sorry. I missed there. We know there's, there's, there's all these different ways we can donate. There's different things. But how do we get other hunters involved? You can post a picture on your Facebook or Instagram of, of a whatever you – a uh, grip and grin, and you can get, you know, 500 likes. Then you post something about, you know, getting involved with how or getting involved with supporting our, our fish and wildlife, and you get no attention to it. It's like they gloss right over it. They don't want to get involved in the politics. Yeah. There, There is a balance. There, There is definitely a balance, Skyler. And, and I, so, by the way, guys, I'm totally guessing with who's talking. I try to memorize voices. Was no, that right? Was that you're Skyler? Doing Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm damn good sometimes. Um, (laughs) but, uh, no, the, the, the point is, is there is a fine balance because what, what happens with like the whole content creator thing, which I hate that term, but whatever it it, it is, what it is, it, we have to be careful about overdoing it and burning people out to where they're numb to it. Right. Exactly. you, but but it also has to be at the forefront of everybody's mind. If if we are passionate as hunters, and and this is our lifestyle, this isn't. And I've said this a million times, so I, I apologize to anybody rolling their eyes. This is not a simple hobby like bottle cap collecting or baseball cards or something like that. This is a lifestyle, and and we as uh, you, you guys. And myself, we, we depend on this lifestyle. This is how we see the world. We understand the complexities and the benefits to effective hunting management, or I'm sorry, wildlife management through hunting. It is proven. It is, it is what has worked. It is why people seek to come to the United States of America from across the world to hunt a Rocky Mountain elk. Because you can't get it anywhere else. And it's accessible. And it's giving us fulfillment and the meat that sustains our families. This is not some vague hobby that we kind of dab our toes in every once in a while, you know, and put a life jacket in and jump in for one weekend a year. This is who we are and what it defines for us as primal individuals that have fed our soul through this process for many, many years and many, many decades So your new approach to wildlife management through an anti-hunting spectrum is new to the world. You are the ones that are outcasts. You are the ones that are bringing this new theory that is unproven and unsustainable through the facts that we can provide you as we go through the decades. We have the data. We have the facts. We have the evidence. We know what works. And how we have to do this is through a unification of hunters that understand that we can't just pick up the pitchfork. Um, 
for any of you hipsters out there, that's just hypothetical talk. Don't don't get worried. <laughs> we pick up the pitchfork only when it applies to something that we're passionate about. And and that's what we have to well, stop. I, I hope that's making sense, guys. Yeah. It's oh, just yeah. the same thing. We just got to be proactive instead of reactive. Yeah. You know, every time this comes up, you know, they, they do these meetings. The commission gets gets together and they, they start making these rulemaking processes, um, seasons, and then we get involved. We need to be involved year-round. Um, you know, we got to keep a real close eye on our commission. We have – three commissioners that are going to be um, their term is up at the end of the year. Um, two of them are, you know, advocates for the sportsman. We got Dominic Isaac and Kim, um, Kim Thornburn are both um, up at the end of the year and Inslee can just reappoint or pick a new one. God, I, so you know, on that, gotta keep- on that point, Bo, like, like how long has Inslee been the governor of Washington? I feel like he's been the governor of Washington my whole life. When the hell is he up? Too long. Let me tell you. Yeah. Skyler. <laughs> what Skyler, the fuck, Skyler, man? Skyler, yeah. Like, See, I mean, he's he, worn out as welcome. He, he, he reminds he, me he of like. He reminds me of like Doctor Evil take, or something. He's, he's just always there. In Eastern Washington. He's. I, I. don't know how he's still here. To be honest with you. I don't either. It's, it's ridiculous. I don't either. Yeah. Yeah. It's. It's crazy. He's. He's. Uh, well, listen. Uh, he, he doesn't need to be there. That, that's all I can say. Okay. You have three counties dictating who is governor. I of know. Washington State. I know. It's so Blows out of balance. Mind, okay. It's so it, out of balance. Yeah, you, so you guys he, know, I, I've, ex- he's, he's, I've explained he's been this. kicked out every restaurant in Ellensburg. Yeah. 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 You know, say, wait, 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 he's, say he's, that one more time. He did. He did what to the restaurants in Ellensburg? <laughs> he's, he's, he's been, uh, He's been refused service at several restaurants in Eastern Washington. Well, I'm refer- refusing him yeah. service he's, right now. He, yeah, well, yeah. Well, I mean, listen, he does not need to be dictating again a wildlife commission. He has no business doing that at all. Okay. It's just a it's a power trip. It's a hidden agenda. And uh, it's, it's frustrating. Yeah. And all yeah. these groups, all these sportsmen need to stand up. And one thing that's not getting mentioned here and it needs to be brought to the forefront is Skyler brought it up earlier is our lack of deer. Like he went Are, on this wait, I'm sorry, two you, week you adventure. Cut out, you cut out just a minute. Your lack of what? Lack of deer. deer. Okay. Okay. In the blue mountains. Okay. That, that seems to be like a foregone conclusion, but you asked Skyler, how many deer did he see on a spring bear hunt? Okay. All the does are down having their babies and they're getting eaten by the spring bears, yeah. right? Coming up down from the valley. Yep. And so uh, let's 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 bring this spring bear hunting. You know, it's funny. I can go back and look at old posts from 2018, which I've done. 2019, 2020, all the way up to current time. And I look and I read about these people talking about on Hunt Washington, like, you know, Hey, I got the spring bear tag. Where do you suggest? Where do you suggest? Where do you suggest? And it's funny how it's dwindled down the talk to now where we're currently at, which is they're trying to eradicate the spring bear season. Yeah. Okay. If you look at the previous five years posts, it's, it's unbelievable the amount of spring bears that people are seeing on these spring bear hunts. Okay. And the limited tags that they're slowly just putting a chokehold on and taking them away. And it, it, well, it, we're right here right now. Yeah, here we are. You know, these commissioners yeah, dictating we that we have no season. And, and it's, they're killing all the deer. The reason people don't see deer in the Blue Mountains, okay, is because they're getting killed by all these predators, okay? Cougars is another one we haven't really touched on. We don't need to, okay? We know. So, where- so Bo. Yeah. Uh, just, just real quick on 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 cougars. Yeah. Do you is there any cougar hunting in the state of Washington? Is there, there any there, any? Well, yeah, you can buy a cougar tag. It's just a revenue generator. You can the okay. Wildlife, yeah, you can right. Buy a yeah, and you know, but so, you, you know, can't run hounds. Like, you can't hey, do any this, of that. This last spring bear season, I was up taking a leak on this kind of like south facing slope, and I just look up in the tree above me. There's a cougar staring at me. Okay. Yeah. So, Isn't that creepy when that happens? <laughs> it's creepy. Yeah, it's creepy. Yeah, yeah, it's super creepy. But they're there. 
right? They're there. They're all around you. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. if we don't have a hound hunting season, no baiting, I'm telling you, it, and then you take away a, a bear seat, it just, it makes absolutely no sense to anybody. Okay. And, uh, it's, a it's an emotional decision that these people have no business making as I touched on earlier, you know? So, um, yep. the deer yep. are dwindling away. The elk are going away. It means fewer tags for hunters like us sitting at this table. You know, people have waited over 20 years for tags in the Blue Mountains, whether it be Dayton or Uh, Buchanan or whatever. It's a dream. I would love to hunt in in the spring bear hunting season for for the Blue Mountains. When you draw that tag, you have to make do on that tag. You have to put it all in. All in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's your priority. Every spouse in the world right now doesn't want to hear this. But when your spouse draws that tag, I'm telling you right now, you let him go buy five thousand dollars worth of gear, okay? And <laughs> then you, you, you also leave him let alone. him pay for a good outfitter, okay? That's another. Thing. <laughs> you leave him. Yeah, well, now, 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 Bo, you're you're just assuming everybody's gender. You're assuming. <laughs> yeah. What if it's the wife that draws the tag? Well, and yeah, does well, the hey, husband it's the wife, to... Absolutely, she gets a break. Okay, okay. But, you know, I'll, that's get some, right. Get we got to be gear. fair. You got to go. You got to go all in, and it. You know, listen. <laughs> A lot of my livelihood is dictated on those coveted tags. I get that. But it doesn't need to be that way. We don't need to be fighting to keep 3,000 elk in the blues. How come there's not 10 or 12,000, right? How yeah. come there's no mule deer to be found anywhere? Everyone's like, where are all the mule deer? God, well, no, man. guess what? They're, they're, they're nowhere to be found, okay? So we need to just bring hound hunting back. Okay, that's for another topic for another day. But we certainly do not need to take away a spring bear season when they wreak so much havoc on these elk calves and fawns. It's ridiculous. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And oh, what was that? Go ahead. This brings us exactly to the point that Joel was making, what Bo just said. This is why the guy who doesn't hunt bear, this is why he needs to care about the bear. Yeah. Because yep. they're already yep. showing their hand. They're already limiting tags in the blues because of the predator problem. This is exactly why guys who don't hunt bear, don't hunt cougars, need to get involved and fight the fight to nip this off right now before it gets trickled down to where, hey, we can't give you guys any tags in the blues at all. This is yep. exactly why guys got to get nip involved. Nip it in the bud. Yep. And for, for any of you listening that are like 20 years old, and thinking that this might be an issue because you're just an elk hunter, let me explain something. When, when, when they take away a a spring bear hunt right now, you're 20 and all of a sudden you look up and they're 30, 10 years from now seems like a lifetime to you because you're only 20. I'm not trying to be offensive, but, but when you're 20, you've only gone through that twice to to, a, a decade. When you're 40, you've gone through it enough to understand that 10 years is not that long and you might wake up one day and your elk season is gone. Think about that. Gone. Yeah. So anyway, I feel like I cut somebody off when I was talking about that. No, you're, you're good. It's yeah, you're totally right on. It's, uh, it's, it's, if we do, like you said, one season, it's ironic that they're talking about the elk and the blues and the lack of calves, right? And, yeah. And the yeah. colored study and, and this and that. And then they want to take away a spring bear season? What What's your goal here? They show I know. That, what's that, your goal? That is what drives me the most crazy about this entire yeah. thing. And, and if any of you Washington commissioners, again, happen to listen to this, because you you decide to make a good decision and a mature decision to actually listen to some of the content that is being put out by people who spend time with these animals. We're not biologists. You don't have to be a biologist to understand how this process works. And so, yep. so let me break it down in a very simplistic form. Elk, deer... And, and a few other smaller, you know, yeah, I, I'm not going to bring in pronghorn because, you know, pronghorn are kind of in the world of their own. So let's talk about elk and deer. The, the thing that makes a healthy landscape is a balanced ecosystem, biological diversity. And when you're talking about 
biological diversity. I don't want anybody to confuse us for the numb nuts that run the Center for Biological Diversity because they're clueless. I thought that was your favorite organization. <laughs> no, listen, <laughs> they actually advocate for biological diversity. I don't put a wolf <laughs> or a bear on a pedestal over every other species on the landscape because that doesn't work, right? And so so I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to... to to talk to the commissioners themselves in, in a sense of biological diversity, you have to have a gigantic portion of the prey species on the, on the landscape to support a much smaller portion of the predator base. So I, I want to ask you, does your emotion that plays into and ties into the fuzziness and the cuteness of a bear and that immaturity that, that, that kind of comes with that. Do, is that worth the destruction of all of the species? Because that's what happens. That's exactly what a predator pit is. When you prioritize, and I, I follow a lot of these anti-hunting groups on Instagram, and they say, the most important iconic species in the West is the wolf or the bear or the blah, blah, blah. Because there's this emotional connection. We've all seen... Uh, what's that, what's that bear's name? Um, you know, he was, he was, uh, like the honey. Gosh, I'm, I'm totally drawing a blank. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. That's right. Winnie the Pooh. We've all, we all love Winnie the Pooh. We, we all love Baloo the bear from, uh, the jungle book. We, we all love all these bears and, and, and the Disney representation of what they, what they sure. permeate, <laughs> so to speak. But when you prioritize a species and, and fail to understand that an overpopulated bear species can offset the balance of an entire ecosystem, because we need the elk, we need the deer, we need the bobcats, we need the mountain lions, we need the bears. Are you guys laughing at me? Are you making fun of me? No. no. I'm sorry. Do I need to come my over there? My computer no, my, my computer keeps making noise, Jim. And so they're like, is your battery going to die? And I'm like, no, it's I all thought, the Haiti. I was, just, right I was stretching out a hammy. I was going to come over there and start putting some people in some headlocks, starting with Joe and Mike. But <laughs> Just kidding. I get my ass whooped. But the, the, the point is, the, this thing is a balanced act. And, and, and the, the, you can't have the same amount of bears on the landscape as you have as elk. Otherwise the elk go away and then what happens the bears die off. And so so this this thing is not scientific. When we when we talk about oh it's emotion versus versus science. It's not scientific. Science is the pursuit of facts, right? Does anybody disagree with that? Science is a pursuit of facts. So this is yep. facts. Correct. The, these are facts. If you have the same amount of black bears and the same amount of wolves and the same of other, or a same amount of elk, what's going to suffer? Well, first, it's going to be the elk. The elk are going to suffer. And then the wolves are going to move off to find other elk. And the bears, they're so ter territorial, they're going to stay there. And then they're going to start getting all sorts of diseases that kill them off because they don't have any more elk calves to feed on in the springtime. Because somebody thought that hunting spring bears made them. Oh, this is what I wanted to get you guys' take on. Um, okay, that, uh, ADD kicking in. So one, one of the commissioners, and I'm sorry if we're going too long, guys, but, but this is, like, really important to me. The, the commission issue in the state of Washington, the spring bear, is it, it has I, – I do not hunt bears in the spring in the state of Washington. In fact, I, I don't ever hunt bears there. But this is super important to me. I want you guys to be able to hunt bears in the spring because it's important to the ecolo ecological balance. I'm getting so excited I can't talk straight. The ecolo ecological balance. So what is your take on spring? Bo, this is real specific to you, man. Um, what is your take on the spring bear being... You know, coming out of hibernation is really lethargic and a very easy target. Can you explain that? Oh, 
Are you? Are you really just asked him that question? Yeah, I, I, this, I mean, I'm just, I'm good. just curious because, man, I've, I've seen a few spring pairs here and there. I've never noticed them to be that lethargic. So, uh, you know, what's, what's no, a professional's no. take on it? There, there's nothing lethargic about them. They're going down. Are you They're sure? Hungry. Are you they sure? I eat. mean, they come out of, they come out I'm of hibernation. Yeah, they, they drop this eat. plug. You know. You know, Jim, if you were here, I would show you some videos and you would be like, oh, my God, that thing is like a lawnmower. And then when they find the elk, that they stand no yeah. chance. They they spread the elk all over from Washington, to Oregon. And it's just and, you know, there's 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 no lethargy no. involved. No. They are prime time. They're ready. And here's the thing. Them boars, they get that scent in there. They want to start breeding, too. Okay, and uh, they'll browse, and then they'll find a sow, and they'll try to breed. And here's the funny thing that it's not really funny, but it's a fact. This is a proven fact. I see it every year. These boars, there might be a sow that might be in heat that might have some cubs with her. He might eat his own cubs. Yep. Okay. So is Winnie the Pooh real nice now at this point? Not really. Your teddy bear, not so much. These bears are savages. Okay, I've seen boars fight over calves. Okay, the cow elk can't stand it. She can't. She can't do nothing. She can sit there and bark and stomp her feet. Okay, and uh, she just finally moves on. She can't save her calf. So it's frustrating on my end to watch this. And uh, you know, I'm going to be in the woods this year. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to be watching. I'm going to be filming. And I'm going to get as much film as I can of that stuff happening. And, uh, you know, sportsmen are not done fighting on this. And it's just, you know, Skyler touched on it. We need commissioners in there who advocate for for sportsmen, 100%. And importantly, Bo, uh, advocating for sportsmen is advocating for wildlife. Do you agree or disagree? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, we are we're we're ethical people. Um, we wouldn't be doing this. We buy our tags year in, year out. And when season's over, what are we all doing? We're all thinking about the next season. What went wrong this season? What gear I need this year? You know, where I'm going this year. Now in Washington, Joel talked on this, Mike talked on this. We're talking about hunting in another state. We never yeah. used to think that way. We shouldn't have to think that way at all. Let's manage our wildlife properly. You know, I want I mean, to that, that's this a state. legitimate that's you a know? legitimate reason for for folks in other western states to say, "Hey, wait a minute. Washington Department of Wildlife and and Fishing or whatever." Um I, I think I said that backwards. Yes. Um that that's a legitimate thing. Like I, for, for me personally, I'm, I, I'm a non-resident in 49 other states and I, I do go out of state and I hunt. And so I can't sit here and rail on, on non-residents coming to Idaho, but we do because of the mismanagement of the state of Idaho here in the panhandle of Idaho, see an absorbent amount of Washingtonians coming over here, clogging up our units. Right. So, so yeah. I mean, somebody yeah. sitting in right. Idaho can, can, can be justified in saying that it is a problem if you in Washington, the, speaking of the commission, can't manage your animals, then we in Idaho suffer from that. Not that we can't handle some non-residents. Like right. I, I'd invite all of you guys over. Come, come on over. Spring bear hunt. Hell, I'll set four. There's right. five of us. I'll set, how, how many, I'll let, set let five barrels up how many? and we'll all have a ball. Let's that do it. Let's awesome. do it. Yes. And then we'll take a presidency <laughs> there. That's awesome. Let, let, me, let me go back and ask Bo something. Yeah. So so what time of the year do the bears come out of hibernation when they keep talking about these lethargic, lethargic bears? When end of March. And okay, perfect. End of March. I couldn't even get into the blues till yeah. the end of May. Seriously. You know, pushing so yeah, so we're not we're not targeting something coming right out of a den. No, not at all. Yeah. No, I mean I find dens air, year after year. I don't just go set up shop on a den right. and hope and go okay that's a den. You know, no, that's not how it is at all. There is no targeting sows with cubs. 
we've always encouraged, if you see cubs, and I always tell people this, be patient with bears, right? Be patient with bears. Now, if you have some boars that are fighting, right, and you know there's elk calves in the area, okay, later on in the season, end of May, June, then, okay, you need to target. You need to set up shop right there, okay? Them elk, they, they, they have enough of that crap. Okay, the ones that survive move on and yeah. head out. Okay, and then boars, then they get the breeding, then they get into breeding. Okay, and that's a whole different which which, which comes around. It, it's which starts phenomenal. really coming What's around that? around June, where where these boars are looking to breed, and and they yes. get, they get super yes. aggressive and super territorial, yep. and they start killing. That, and I think it, would any of you guys would any of you guys disagree with the statement that in the state of Washington more cubs were killed by aggressive boars than hunters? Oh, hundred percent. So absolutely. There, there's no cubs killed by hunters. Well, what what None. what I meant by that not, is not you know watch. by a I've hunter killing it. a sow, okay. the okay. the cubs okay, might die. Listen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's funny. Yes. Yes. Hey, let me ask you this, Jim. How many people from Idaho are like going, hey, I want to go hunt Washington? How many people do you know, honestly? Be honest. I, I seriously none. I, I have okay. I have okay. one friend. Oh, hold on. I, I I have one friend that is an avid his name's Troy Pottinger. He's been on the show multiple times. He likes the baiting idea in the state of Washington for white-tailed deer, and he gets a tag as often as he can. Other than that, I don't know any Idahoans that go to Washington to hunt. Hey, but and they me, just, yeah, that's no, going they away. They just proposed to take that away. Yeah, I know, right? Ago. Right? Yeah. I know. Well, I know. I, I think that they, <clears throat> I think that they're screwing up by, by making that petition. Oh. Because they have specified that it's only during hunting season. So yeah. they've showed their hand that they only want to do it during hunting season, but that doesn't include all the times that the department is feeding all these elk during winter. Those elk are still mingling. If that was their whole thing to, you know, manage CWD, it, it's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's going to go through because of a, a, a few things that I can't say right now. Right. Yeah. 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 And, and the CWD totally agree. being uh, brought to the forefront there's really not a lot of cases, at least in the blues. Okay. Hardly like zero, you know? So yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's like you are taking these locals that have been feeding deer and elk for in their families, generations. And you know, well, I, somebody's going to take that away. I might it, be ignorant to this, but what the hell does baiting ridiculous. have to do with CWD? I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm missing something, but I don't know they, what baiting they, has to do with, with CWD. I think it's condensing the, the yeah. fear. Yes. Yeah, you're bringing all these animals in gotcha. one spot. That, They're okay. mingling. I, They're I see it's just like the, sheep. it's like the sheep. One's infected. Yep. They all get infected. Okay, right? so it's I'm going to introduce... I'm going to introduce a concept to the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. I'm going to be open to that, and I'm going to do some serious homework to find out what baiting and CWD has in comparison in terms of factual data that suggests the spread of CWD, the prion disease that uh, has yet to spread to humans. I'm, I'm going to find out. I'm going to find out. Right. Listen, commissioners, yeah. that's what we do. That's what we do. We yeah. find out the facts. <laughs> And, you know, I encourage any commissioner, anybody at Fish and Wildlife um, to come with one of the outfitters in the Blue Mountains and see just what's going on. And then they can go, wow, this is so rugged. Where are all the deer and elk? Right. Hey, look at those three bears on that ridge. I would right? invite I, I that. That is an excellent, excellent point. And I would invite. And this, the, I'll, I'll say it publicly right now. I will invite any Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife commissioner that wants to come to Idaho and either get a tag or just accompany me on an Idaho bear hunt in the spring to examine and monitor what I do and the amount of bears that I see because I bait and my friends that run hounds 
and the other friends that do, you know, strictly spot and stock type kind of hunting to come with us and learn something, learn something about these bears, watch them on a bait pile, watch them on a bait barrel, watch them through a scope, yeah. watch them with the hounds. Come with me. I dare you because you will walk away with a completely new perspective because in the state of Idaho, we have all sorts of things. We could pursue them with hounds. We could pursue them with bait. We could do spot and stock. We could do all sorts of things. And yet here we are with more than two to four black bears per square mile on our national forests. That's an incredulous number. And the percentage of the population that hunts versus the percentage of the population per capita in the state of Washington that hunts, that's saying something. We have a lot of bear hunters, so come on over and see. Find, watch it. It's a, it's a hoot. We sit in this little spot that I have set up, and we can watch these little cubs run up, up and down the tree, and they play with each other, and they wrestle, and they, they, they bum around while mom's down there feeding on the bait barrel. Guess what? I don't shoot her because I know she's got cubs. So come and watch this process. Yep. Learn something from out of state yep. and, the, and the narrow view that you've developed in your mind. Have some maturity and educate yourself and come with me. I will invite you. We won't have to film it. We won't have to do anything other than you educating yourself on what wildlife management through hunting looks like with the North American model of wildlife conservation. Yeah. I, uh, you, you guys will like this. I, I touched on this on Dwayne's show a couple weeks back, but I was watching this a few years ago, watching this uh, mountain goat, and she had her baby with her, and, uh, you know, she wasn't very old. And I watched this bear, and I just where she was, she was like, like the baby was up above her, and she's watching this bear, and the bear must have a scent on her. And it's just kind of yeah. coming up and I'm like, oh, this bear is going to get it. Right. And I watched her walk away from her baby while watching the bear to see, OK, follow me, follow me. And she literally led this bear in a zigzag on this open face and then circled back around behind him. And the bear was like, like following her steps like, OK. And then she got up and she nudged her baby up over the top of the ridge. And I thought. That is Mother Nature at its finest. It was awesome to oh, see. Oh, that's fantastic. Right? And I, of course, of course, sitting on that ridge, I'm like, where's my spring bear hunter right now? <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, we, we, that's another thing in the Blue Mountains too that no one really talks about is, you know, I, I've talked to Peter, the Rocky Mountain Goat Alliance to get, you know, eventually get a mountain goat hunting there. Right. I love seeing the goats yeah. in there. Yeah. Well, they're under a great too, spot. Okay. So, yeah, they're they're under threat, and it's like uh, it's a simple solution. And you know, I'm glad we're all talking about this, um, and hopefully, something comes to fruition soon about it. But there definitely needs to be a spring bear season going forward. There has I mean, to that's be. That's just a no brainer. Spring bear is a there very yeah. effective wildlife conservation management tool, and that's that's what I want your commission is to really understand it. It's not that we're just a bunch of bloodthirsty dudes that want to go out there and kill everything, right? That that's not what hunters are. We and and you can you can look across the spectrum, and and you can always point out to the you know five to five to ten percent of any group that makes us all look bad, and that's what they want to focus on. Well, I can point out the five to ten percent of anti-hunters that make you all look like a bunch of dumbasses. So don't act like we're the only ones with that. <laughs> demographic or, or whatever and yeah. so right. going forward the the conservation efforts that that we have in the in the in the state of idaho or i'm sorry state of washington we have to get this spring bear back uh on the books it has to be there because without it the the management system and and what what has taken place on the landscape throughout the excellent habitat that washington is i, I tell you one of you guys brought up Ellensburg, one of the biggest herds of elk I've ever seen yeah. in one place was coming over that pass on I-90 with all the windmills. I can't remember. You cross the, uh, the, the river there. Clock and what, pass. What, which yeah. pass? Clock and pass. Yeah. Clock and yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and then Welcome you drop back. down into Ellensburg. Um, massive, yep. massive. My boss was riding with me. I'm, I'm cruising down the road. We're coming from Yakima. We come up over the pass out of Ellensburg, dropping down onto the river. <laughs> and he's just yakking up a storm about what kind of goals I want to set for the next year for revenue generating and blah, 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 blah. And I kind of tuned him out and I stopped him. I'm like, Look at the look at the freaking elk right there, man! Look at all those elk. They're running through the windmills. Yeah. It was crazy, and I've never seen yeah. that many elk amassed yeah. in in one spot together. And I, you know, I've been all over the West. That's saying something. So, Washington has yeah. Washington has the the future, and and it has the capacity and the habitat and the potential to be a magnificent Western state for for. For both yes. non-hunters and hunters, but hunters are what's going to make that magnificence happen. So I want to close this out. We we've been doing this a while, and and this is an um, this is a super important episode. So, but I I want to close this out by asking you guys what hunters, whether they're in Florida or you know Ontario, Canada, or or in New Mexico, what what can we do as hunters to unite? And have your back going forward with this spring bear hunt to get you guys back on the books for spring bear. All right. For one thing, uh, make sure you put in the show notes the um, the website for the public comment on this through the uh, Fish and Game Department. There is a uh, there's a link and there's, okay. there's I've been looking at it for the last two two and a half days, and there are hundreds and hundreds. There might even be thousands by now of comments in support of this spring bear. And this is, this is totally separate from Howl. There's a portal. There is a uh, public comment portal for spring bears specifically in the Washington department of fish and wildlife's website. And it is, it is, I can't believe how many uh, comments have been on there, but that is one of the biggest things they can do. And the other thing is, is set their calendar and get registered when the agenda comes up get on the um, agenda for the March 11th. It's, it's not up yet. You can go onto their calendar, but it's it, the public outpouring has to be the, the testimony has to be there because I listened to the testimony on the Colorado bill yesterday and I, I couldn't believe how many people remotely and in person were in, you know, didn't want that bill to pass. And it, one of the senators even said that she was, extremely impressed with the outpouring of effort that the, that the, the, um, the people that were against it put out. She had never seen it in all her years of being in the Senate. That's pretty good. So the, the, hold on, hold on, Mike, the, the they were against, so, that is Mike. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So the, we didn't want that bill to pass in Colorado because the bill, if it passed. It was gonna oh, okay. Yeah. I, I'm just making sure they were against the bill, not against the, the mountain lion. Right. Bill. Right. And she said she, she's yeah. that, that, that bill uh, testimony went on for four hours. She was in another uh, chamber and she came back and she couldn't believe it was still going on. She was super, super impressed. Wow. She's in all her years had never seen it. And she was, she was a, a no vote for the bill. So, I mean, it, this, it's the guy. So that's, that's the power of it. Oh yeah. Big time. Okay. So Mike, can, can people comment on the comment period for Washington Spring Bear more than once? Like, yep. can they send more than one email? You could keep doing it. And then on, on, on how for wildlife that's, that's available it's already in place, um, and, and folks listening, I know there is a, uh, a a bear hunt issue going on in California that we're going to address later. Uh, but f- please get on Hal for uh, wildlife in and acknowledge. And, and by the way, guys, if you're following me on Instagram, which you, you all know I'm a rookie at, but the Instagram has a link in my bio that is a link tree. So the tree allows you to, uh, you know, click on this to listen to the episode or whatever. But the one of the top ones is the How for Wildlife uh, link. So it's super easy to get there. And what I would challenge this audience, and you're not one of the stupid PETA people that just tune in to give me shit because you can get my email address. Screw you. Uh, for the rest of you, I challenge you. Like I, I, I legitimately, I challenge you 
to take 15 minutes out of your week and send two emails to the comment period in the Washington Spring Bear and jump on How for Wildlife and send two via How for Wildlife. Can you guys see me? Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm not totally sure what happened yeah, there. Yeah. I'm not super happy with this software, man. Um, I'm going to complain about that. Like it totally kicked us out. Mike was right in the huh. middle of, of explaining where they can, you know, what, what can happen with the signing of the link. And it just all of a sudden disappeared. Um, I'm madder than a vegan oh, at a barbecue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Joe, why, why that you were gone? Joe mounted the elk. There you I go. guarantee awesome. he yeah. did. You know, Joe, you need to calm down, dude. <laughs> calm down, man, and just sit and join the conversation. You're, you're always mounting shit. You're probably stitching up the brisket right now. Once we... <laughs> once once we click off this gym, I'll, we'll we'll get back on the on the on the visual, and I'll paint you around in the shop. All right, perfect. Well, let, let's wrap Please. this up, guys. I, I want to. We've been going for a long time, and I I want to I want to just highlight to the audience that uh, the, the important thing right now is all of us throughout America and throughout Canada, and that lone dude in Indonesia that uh, downloads my podcast every month or every week. Um, Hold on, I, I got I got I got one guy in Scotland. Oh, Brody Brody. Shout, shout out, out to, to Scotland! It's a guide for me. Shit, yep. I love it, man. I love yeah. that. I love the overseas yeah. stuff, man. I, I don't know, dude. I'm telling you, yeah. there's some random uh, dude or gal or whatever in Indonesia that I get I get one download a week from, and it puts it. it it's awesome because it boosts my. Uh, what what do they call it? That uh, this is super fancy terminology. Search engine optimization, Morale? because they, uh, um, you know, anyway, different countries they 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 create these different SEO results or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that any of that means, but it's it's cool. So whoever you are in Indonesia, if you speak English, obviously you do. If you listen to this show, uh, you're a stud. <laughs> You're, you're awesome. I appreciate it. Like, <laughs> fuck. That's badass. Uh, so, um, guys, I the, the point is what I'm trying to say is wherever you're at in the world, um, whoever's in Antarctica, I'm sure somebody down there listens to it. Uh, we we got to come together. We got to have the backs of the, the hunters over in Washington. They need us. And this is what we do. This is why I started the show. Our friends in Washington need us. And just think if if something like Lorna Smith comes a call into your state, we're going to need our friends in Washington. So let's scratch their back while they scratch. And, and we'll, we'll how did I start that? Did I say scratch their back? So, <laughs> geez, man, we've been on this for a long time and I've had two cocktails and I haven't drank for a while. So <laughs> let's, let's just be honest. Things are getting tongue twisted at this point in my life. Uh, but but guys, yeah. scratch their back. They're going to scratch our back. Our, our friends in Washington need us. They need us bad. This spring bear hunt is not just critical because somebody wants to go shoot a bear in the spring. It's important to conservation. It's important to our lifestyle. It's important to the liberties as Americans that we enjoy. It's important to all these different aspects that we need to come together and fight for each other. There are no state lines when it comes to anti-hunting. There are no state lines. Let's check out the link in the show notes and, and let's make it happen. Guys, make your voices heard. Any any closing thoughts from any of you guys? Yeah, just a real quick, uh, just a just a review real quick of that of that raffle that we got going on. Not to draw any attention to, to my business at all, but just I really want to promote. Oh, oh, did Joel decide to join? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I had to stop from the elk for a minute. Uh, no, I just I just want to make sure that, you know, people, it's a really good opportunity. I want to get Howell uh, some funds to do that. And so just kind of want to uh, revisit that and just, you know, have people go onto the Facebook or the Instagram thing. All the details are in there. Again, it's $10 for a ticket, man. And it gets you a deer shoulder mountain here and, we'll, and I'll get it done for you in six months or under. And then, yeah, Jim, send me the specifics on the call stuff. And I'll put that on the uh, on the page tomorrow, so we can uh, add that. To it. Yeah, man, that's awesome. I might buy a ticket now. So, <laughs> Bu- bugle tube, bu- bugle tube, two mouth reeds, a reed case, and an external uh, reed 
and uh, a T-shirt from the Western Hunts right. because I like to promote my um, show. So there you go. Well, thank you so much for doing this, Jim. Yep. Appreciate it. All right, guys. I, I appreciate you coming on. I I know I know that at times it can be a little bit difficult uh, when when there's you know multiple people on at one point or whatever. We we kind of you know it, it gets hard. But I wouldn't mind maybe doing this again prior to the fishing or fish and wildlife. I was going to say fish and game, fish and wildlife meeting uh, coming up on the nineteenth uh, and the seventeenth there in Washington to kind of help spike some uh, interest at that point, because I, I, you know, here it is. It's the beginning of, in fact, today is February 4th. It's my dad's 71st birthday. Happy birthday, dad. I don't know. I don't know if my old man listens to this, (laughs) but if my old man is listening, happy birthday. I appreciate you doing what you did to make me here, you know, whatever. Well, Tony, Uh, Tony, happy birthday. Tony Wintrip wanted to join us, but he was under threat of castration. If he, uh, (laughs) If he showed up, he had a kid. No. He had a he had a, an event tonight. So uh, maybe next time we do this, we'll get we'll get him with us. Yes. Tony's busy singing songs, uh, <laughs> you know, about mountain house and shit. I'm totally kidding, Tony. He's uh he's one of my favorite peeps. He's been on the show before too. So, guy. um, guys, I I appreciate you doing this. The, your advocacy, uh, your advocacy by doing this, it, it shows your commitment to our lifestyle, uh, your commitment to conservation, the the future of hunting, the future of our wildlife, uh, throughout all these landscapes throughout the American West. Uh, this is what I'm passionate about, and so the the fact that you guys took the time to do this out of your busy schedules. I know it's a Friday night, um. Man, it means a lot. It, it it really does. It means a lot to me, and I hope folks listening to this understand the depths of of, of that. And and we want to return the favor by signing these petitions, signing the uh, or, or commenting during the commenting period, jumping on to howforwildlife.com. dot uh, com. Let's make a difference, org. guys. Dot- Thank you very much. Or uh, did I say dot com? Yeah, yeah. Dot org. Son of a bitch. Yep. How for wildlife. Dot org. Been drinking too How much. for wildlife. <laughs> Yeah. I have, but guys, it's in the show notes and it's in the show <laughs> link on the Instagram. So jump on there, uh, whiskey aside, and uh, let's support our friends in Washington. And here we go. Thanks, guys, for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Don't Drew. hang up. Nope. You made it all the way to the end. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. We sure appreciate your support. This is Jim Huntsman signing off and reminding you to check us out at Instagram at The Western Huntsman and on Facebook at The Western Huntsman. And you can also check out the website at thewesternhuntsman.com. Thanks again. We'll see you guys next time. Stay Western, and I'll see you on the mountain.